Hello, everybody, and welcome. This is the Apostate Prostate. Uh, hope everybody's doing well. I'm extraordinarily late today because, to be very honest, I forgot that I um, that this live stream is still scheduled for this time. I thought I uh, postponed it or canceled it or something. I don't know. I don't. I can't even think anymore. That's what I thought, but uh, then I realized, oh, wait a minute, people are waiting. It's suppo I'm supposed to go live. That's that's funny. Um, in this live stream, which I originally scheduled to have a debate with um, Jake, the Muslim metaphysician, I was supposed to go live. He would go live simultaneously on his own channel, and we would then talk about his view that apostates should be executed. Um, unfortunately, Jake, the Muslim metaphysician, who always likes to brag about what an amazing debater he is and how he humiliates the other side and how the other side is always scared and stuff like that, then backed out and canceled this and said you can cancel it uh, and then he even blocked me so um since i'm 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 a good guy i would like to tell him if he is watching right now that he can always message me and can always hop on here and explain himself of course i doubt that that will happen um and he can't he by the way he canceled because uh Co completely unrelated issue because of the whole Israel-Palestine thing, because he didn't like what I retweeted. Um, I will have David Wood on here. He'll, I think, he's going to join me in, in a few minutes, because after canceling with me, he challenged David Wood to a debate, and and David told him, "You already um, agreed to have a debate with with AP." Do your debate with him first, and then you can debate me. And Jake then twisted that and told his audience that he challenged David Wood, and David Wood got scared of him. This this is the kind of person that Jake, the Muslim metaphysician, is. And I'm already familiar with the, with the guy. You know, I didn't really want to um, honestly. I didn't really want to spend my time dealing with that completely narcissistic, hypocritical, dishonest piece of shit. But uh, be because I'm tired and I'm dealing with um, all of the other stuff that is ongoing at the moment, but I will use this opportunity to demonstrate how dishonest this guy is. Because I, sh I told him that I will expose him publicly for the liar that he is, upon which he accepted to have a live discussion with me and since he canceled that now i take that as a as a confirmation that it's entirely okay for me to expose publicly how horrible he is and how dishonest he is even to his own muslim audience and i will share my screen for that all right let's see <laughs> I'm sorry, so many people left because I never arrived here. I'm 40 minutes late. I know, I know. Sorry, man. Um, wait, let me change the title here. Uh, David Wood. Okay. Okay. All right. Don't don't blame me for being late. Technically, I'm never late because time is. It is a metaphysical matter. Yeah. Uh, all right. Let's see. Where do I even begin with this guy? Okay, so this guy published a video. Where do I even begin with this guy? Man? Uh, so, <laughs> so this guy first published a video in which he, after having a conversation, after having a live discussion with Robert Spencer and... Um, and 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 brother rashid he published a video in which he argued that robert spencer and brother rashid were so bad that even the christians uh, all agree with him and even the christians are saying that the that, that the christian side was very bad 
and that the Muslims did a much better job and they agree with the Muslims and stuff like that. And I look at that video and I thought, wait a minute, something seems really, really wrong here. Uh, where is it? Here. Oh, yeah, here. There is not a single person that they can actually point to who is uh, a Christian or a non-Muslim or something who actually verifiably said, hey, you know what, guys, I watched this conversation and I agree with the Muslim side. They were much better. Not a single person. Did you hear that? I watched the conversation and I agree with the Muslim side. They were much better. There is not a single person that they can actually point at, not a single real person. Pay attention to what I said. Not a single person who said, I agree with the Muslim side, and they were much better. I have to call it how I see it. The Christian side made huge mistakes in this debate. Just objectively watching the debate, seeing it for what it was, I think most people would say that the Muslim side actually won the debate. You've just seen that footage, right? And from the look of it, it might look like that guy is saying that the Muslims were, of course, right and the Christians were totally wrong in this discussion. Um, what was that guy's channel? I actually looked it up. Damn, I forgot. I, don't, I doubt anyone has, a, has the name of this guy or the, a link to his channel. But I actually found a link to it and looked it up. Voice of Reason, yes, Voice of Reason. Thank you. Thank you, JS, JS. Voice of Reason. Is, was that it? Was that? Yes, yes, that was it. So I went to the video and, <laughs> and looked at the context to see if this is actually what the guy is saying. And I have it right here. This is the video that you took it from, right? This is the video. Now let's search. Where was that? The word objectively was mentioned. Objectively. Like objectively was mentioned. Okay, here. Let's look at this now. Now this guy does indeed say that he doesn't agree with uh, with Robert Spencer and with Brother Rashid on, on certain things. Uh, on their definition of or in their explanation of apostasy laws and all of, all of that. But does he actually say that they won the debate, that the Muslims won the debate? Inside messed up. Bad. Okay, I don't know if this is copyrighted. I can't please. Yes. Welcome back to my channel. You are listening to The Voice of Reason. And this is episode two of Coffee with Reason. So I hope that you are all doing well on this lovely morning. I hope that you are... How does he have this voice? <laughs> I'll have your... Mo not, not a bad thing. Mugs of coffee, and you guys are sipping and enjoying along with me. Thank you again for joining me. And on today's episode of Coffee with Reason, I wanted to talk about a recent debate that I watched that took place on Patrick Bed David's podcast on his YouTube channel between two Christians and two Muslims. On the Christian side, we have the great Robert Spencer, Greek Orthodox Christian, and we also have the great brother Rashid, a Christian who is a convert from Islam, who had to flee. So it begins with praise. See, clearly looks like he's going to bash those people, right? Morocco because of the persecutions after his conversion. And on the Muslim side, you had the Muslim metaphysician and the Muslim skeptic. And no praise for them. The debate was about two hours long, a little over two hours. I watched most of it. I still have about maybe 25 minutes left, but I've seen the vast majority of it. And um, I thought it was actually a really good debate for the most part. It was, it went really well, I think, but... Well, so far, he even said that it was good, that it was great for the most part. Doesn't really look like he's going to bash the Christians for doing a horrible job. But ultimately, I think that there was one moment in the debate where the Christian side messed up really bad. And for... So, look, that is right. He says there was one part in the debate where the Christian side messed up bad. This guy is a Catholic. He doesn't agree fundamentally with the uh, with with the with the interpretation of morality presented by uh, Robert Spencer and Brother Rashid. But here we have we have David Wood. What's up, David? Yo, yo, yo! Hey, what's up? I had my head shrunken down because uh, Michael Brown was on with me yesterday. So Thank now, you. small, yeah, okay. I have grown. You see that? 
Yeah, fantastic. I can grow or shrink at will. Yeah, yeah, fantastic, man. Okay, what's going on? Nothing. I'm just talking about uh, Jake, the Muslim metaphysician, the brave debater that we all are, that we are all scared of. Jake, the one we're all running from. Yes, we are all humiliated. Hey, I can tell you some stuff about Jake. You're finished already. You're finished already. Look at me. Look at me. You know you're done. Yeah. What can you tell me about Jake? Quick. I want to know about Jake. I want to. <laughs> it's... So Jake has repeatedly challenged me to debate. I have repeatedly agreed, and every single time he then backs out. Um, and so, uh, I'll have to check the emails because all sounds very familiar because yeah. this was all through a third party. So it's possible that, uh, not all information was conveyed to me or something like that. But, uh, as far as the information available on my end, this was like last December and I get a message from James at modern day debate said, Hey, uh, Jake is interested in debating you on the topic. Is the Trinity rational? And I said, fine, but if he gets to pick a topic, then I'll pick a topic. And I picked the topic, was Muhammad a true prophet? We'll do both debates. We'll do both debates, right? Now that seems fair to me, right? Because he's saying, hey, I want to debate this. And I say, fine, okay, I want to debate this. So we both, we both get the debate we want, right? Seems fair to me. Jake said no. Hey, wait, All right. Spencer is saying, hey, where's Jake? I thought it was, was going to be a debate. <laughs> I'll be Jake. <laughs> uh, uh, let, uh, everyone should be killing apostates. Everyone should do it. Everyone should do it. Just what's, like us. Just like us. We're fucking killing apostates. Just want to kill you. Right. Just don't do anything uh, bad to us, please. Okay. Now, now notice. Now notice. He challenged me to a debate. I said, uh, "Fine, we'll do. We'll do two debates. One, one topic I pick. One topic you pick. And it's not like I'm picking some weird topic. It's, I mean, that should be." In theory, that should be their favorite topic, right? Was Muhammad a true prophet? That's look, if you could show Muhammad's a true prophet, you you, you want you win. Simple. You Simple. win that your religion is true. <laughs> they won't touch it. They won't touch that topic, right? So anyway, that was December. Notice I didn't run around. Jake is running from me. Jake, Jake backed out. Ha <laughs> ha. I didn't. Why? I don't care. If you don't want to debate, don't debate. I'm not, I, I don't, I don't, I don't control you. Uh then April comes around, and I forget what the suggested topic was. But James said, hey, Jake is interested in debating on some something with theology, some theological topic. And I said, fine, I agree. But we're also going to debate, was Muhammad a true prophet? Then James contacted me again. He says, okay, but uh, Jake wants the uh, the other topic, I mean, the, the, the topic to be, is the Trinity rational and was Muhammad a true prophet? I said, done, deal. And then, then I started talking about the format and stuff. Um, we're talking about setting it up. And then James messages me and said, oh, Jake says he's not doing it. I'm like, wait, <laughs> he challenged me. I agreed. He backed out. He challenged me again. I agreed. He agreed. Then he backed out. Okay. So then uh, so that was April. Then I saw you had arranged a debate with Jake on apostates. You had something going on there. Not the first and, time, by the way. Yeah, go ahead. And then, as far as I, unless I'm missing something, he backed out. And then after, right after he backed out of his debate with you on apostates, he challenged me to a debate on apostates. So I get a debate. So I get the topic. James sends it to me. He says, Jake wants a debate. Should apostates be killed? And hey, I reply. Wait, wait, wait a second. Wait a second. You know what? But you know what's funny? What I just, what I didn't even think about the whole time. He canceled hmm. his debate with me because of my, uh, because he called me a, a Zionist chill who supports the killing of, of innocent people or something like what, that. What what do you what do you Completely believe what do you believe about that whole situation that I am not on the same yeah. page with you and, on? And then he goes and challenges you to a debate? Yeah, challenge me to a debate on the same topic, even though we're we're pretty much in, in agreement here on the issues. Yes, it sucks. It sucks for both sides in that yeah. situation. Yeah. Yeah. But what I, I I don't know. Yes, I would like, I would like. Israel to take absolutely every precaution they can possibly take to avoid uh, killing random people or innocent civilians and so on. Yes, absolutely. But at the end of the day, you got to deal with terrorists. You just have to. You can't sit there letting them pick pick away at you for forever. This, this, this is really messed up, Jake. I didn't even think about this before uh, before David just brought it up again. But why in the world would you cancel with me and then even block me? Good question. I'll tell because, you why. Because I retweeted Ben Shapiro. 
saying uh, something about uh, the U.S. I'm going to go. And, this and, that. And, and he and called me a Zionist shill. And then right after that, you go and challenge David Wood, who already agrees with me very much on the whole Israel-Palestine thing. Uh, I'll, is I'll, I'll, I'll tell you exactly what's going on, right? So, so then he challenges me. And I, I, I get the message, Jake wants to debate you on should apostates be killed? And so I said, uh, question one, like apostates from what? Apostates from anything? Like anyone who changes his mind about anything that has to be killed? I, I mean, is, is that what we're seriously debating? Should anyone who ever changes his mind about anything be killed? Or does he have something specific in mind? Like like apostates from from Islam, since that's the one where we're, uh, they're the only group I'm aware of is running around saying, ah, we got to kill all these guys who are leaving our religion, right? So I say, one, you gotta you gotta clarify it. If this is what he's talking about, then then title it like this: Should apostates from Islam be killed or something like that? And two, he needs to he needs to do his debate with. I'm not setting up I'm not setting up anything with this guy. When he keeps he, he keeps arranging debates and then and then backing out, I said, do your debate with AP that you agreed to, and then I will debate you. So uh, notice it's <laughs> I have agreed to four debates with this guy. He has backed down every single time in one way or another. He That's backed funny. down. I didn't back down from anything. I accepted every topic he wanted. That's the only funny. thing I requested was a little clarification on what apostates he's talking about killing. Hey, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. What? He, Mr. Big Man said, apostate prophet, remember what happened to Hatun two years ago? Uh, you both best uh, tread lightly and give up or uh, you will see the fury of two billion Muslims. Is this uh, someone who's serious or is this is this like a joke? I don't know. It could be serious. Uh, is you know, it? Is it serious? People do this stuff all the time. Is know. this serious? Is he serious? Is this a serious threat? Because because I'm I'm feeling threatened right now. And what happens Are when? You, do you feel threatened? Oh. <sighs> Guys, can anyone go to Mister Big Man's page and see if he's real? Because I don't want to I don't want to mess around if it's a troll. If it's someone who's actually threatening us, I I tend to react in a certain way. Okay. Okay. Fine. Fine. I'll give you. I'll give you the chance. I'll give it. I don't know. Yeah. Let, let Let me just go. Let me just go do a little snooping here and see if I can find out if this guy's serious or and a troll. By the way, what, what happened two hundred two years ago? What happened? She was she was attacked uh, in the most cowardly fashion by some uh, coward who then had to run away and seek protection because he was a coward, just like you guys usually are, because you're scared of words, scared of ideas, scared of criticism. Scared of jokes, scared of humor, scared of questions. That's what happened, guys. What do you think? Is Mister Big? Is Mister Big Man? Uh, uh, there's nothing on his. There's nothing on his on his channel. Is he? He's, he might be a very small man. He might be a troll. I don't know. I don't know what it is. Uh, um, better safe than sorry. Ah! Oh no! Look what we did. Oh, we're so scared of the two billion Muslims. What are they going to do? Oh no! Ah, we're so scared. We're so scared. Ah. <laughs> better safe than sorry. God. Stupid. All right. Oh, All anyway, right. back, back, back to back to uh, back to uh, finishing up with Jake. So then, after all of that, D Wood. I need to make just my own short video for this because I, I'm not. The only reason I even knew what was happening on Jake's page is he somehow tagged me in his message that I'm running from him now. And uh, then all his followers uh, are, are, of course, liking and sharing and stuff. When he says, David Wood is a coward. I challenge him to a debate and he's running and all this stuff. And it's like, you challenge me to four debate. I, I mean, you challenge me to three different debate topics. I agree to all of them. On the uh, on the condition that I get to pick a topic too, or at the very least that you go through with your topic that you just agreed to debate with AP, and then I'm I'm the one who's running. I've agreed to four debates with him. He has backed down on all of them. He agreed to debate you. He backed down from that somehow. Somehow in the opposite world that is Dawa, where up is down and down is up, where left is right and right is left, where good is evil and evil is good, where the creator of the universe. The creator of the universe wants you to beat your wife into submission and rape little kids and slaughter anyone who uh, develops the ability to think for for themselves. No um, that yeah, he wants he wants you to kill and beat and, and torture no. and, and rape and do all this stuff. But you know, don't eat a ham sandwich. That's what that's what the creator is really really concerned about. And um, don't use the f word. Don't use the f word. Yeah. And so um, so so. Remember, Daniel, so it's just the op it's just the opposite of everything we could possibly think of. Somehow, the guy who 
walks around challenging people to debates and then always, always, always backs down five minutes later. He's the hero, the courageous one. And the people who consistently agree, okay, let's do it, let's do it, let's do it, let's do it, let's do it. We're the cowards. That's how that's how things work in the opposite land of uh, Dawa world. Emblem. And it's just just crazy stuff. Anyway, yeah, I got to make a short. I got to make a short video on I, that. Just I thought to Muslims it. were brave, man. I, kind of, I, I thought Muslims were brave. What kind of Muslim are you, Jake? What kind of Muslim are you? Terrible, terrible. Be ashamed. Uh, well, that is that is the background of this. We will get into the background a little bit more. I just started with this clip, and I want to finish this. And then you came in and disrupt, disrupted it all. But uh, so uh, I showed a little clip in which, um, for context again, I will play it again. Play it again. Um, so Jake. There is no what I, is the, I don't in the world is going on. What is Jeez. <laughs> okay. You Mr. Technology this? here. Mr. It's technology. YouTube is not my problem. Look at this. Okay. Single oh, yeah. It's, it's YouTube's fault. Listen. Point to who is uh, a Christian or a non-Muslim or something who actually verifiably said, hey, you know what, guys, I watched this conversation and I agree with the Muslim side. They were much better. Not a single person. So my words were, I watched this debate and I agree with the Muslim side. They were much better. Okay, so, and now he presents to us a little. I have to call it how I see it. The Christian side made huge mistakes in this debate. Just objectively watching the debate, seeing it for what it was, I think most people would say that the Muslim side actually won the debate. This is what he says, right? And I thought, huh, oh, this is odd, this is interesting, but... I would like to go and uh, and check the context of this. Wait, wait, wait. So a, a, a quick question. He's not completely misrepresenting what actually happened, right? Who? What? Jake. Who? Is, is, is Jake misrepresenting something? I don't know what he's saying. Oh, I, I don't, I don't here, recall. It. Uh, here in this case, he is he's misrepresenting um, the most important part here. He's representing one thing correctly. This guy says uh, that the Christian side made a mistake when it comes to one topic. Mm -hmm. And this guy disagrees with them on the issue of apostasy. But then, especially this part, where he says, uh, you know, objectively watching, you know, the Christian side or the Muslim side won the debate, something like that. You, you would think, watching this video, that this is what he is actually saying. So I went to the video and opened it up to watch it. And what did I discover? The Christian side, okay. it's actually a really good debate for the most part. It was, it went really well, I think. But ultimately, I think is, that there is was. Is this how this guy talks? He's got a cool, like, super, super, super but deep he, voice. He also praises, he also you know, refers to um, Brother Rashid and Robert Spencer as the great brothers, the great Robert Spencer and the great Brother Rashid before, and doesn't do any of the same praise for the Muslims uh, in the past, uh, before that. But um, let's, let's see. Moment in the debate where the Christian side messed up really bad. And for people on the outside... So, this is a correct representation of what this guy says, only about that part. It was overall great, but there was one part where the Christian side messed up. Okay, that's his opinion. Now comes the relevant part. I'm looking in that maybe you don't really do Look, bad. Pay attention to the And words. for people on the outside looking in that maybe you don't really aren't too deep in the weeds on the situation, I think that people on the outside looking in, just objectively watching the debate, seeing it for what it was, I think most people would say that the Muslim side actually won the debate. <laughs> Why do I? Is this guy, so is this guy saying, objectively viewed, sitting down and watching the debate, the Muslim side won? Or is he saying that if you look at it, if you look at the situation from the outside, without being very familiar with it, you would watch it and say the Muslim side won. Which one is he saying? Well, on the outside looking in, that maybe you don't really do really bad. He's specifically uh, referring to people who don't know any better and who don't know yes, about yes, issues that are being discussed yes, and so on. Yes. Look. People on the outside looking in, that maybe don't really aren't too deep in the weeds on the situation. I think that people this guy has the, the deepest voice ever. Yeah. In just objectively watching the debate, seeing it for what it was. I think most people would say that the Muslim side actually won the debate. Why do I say this? Well, now, David, you saw what uh, Jake posted. No, I didn't. What did he say? I forget. I just showed you the video, man. 
Yeah, well, it doesn't mean I remember every little detail. <laughs> <laughs> there is not a single person that they can actually point to who is uh, a Christian or a non-Muslim or something who actually verifiably said, hey, you know what, guys, I watched this conversation and I agree with the Muslim side. They were much better. Not a single person. I have to call it how I see it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, right. totally. Totally. Yeah, look, made huge totally totally twisted this guy subjectively watching this guy's debate. this guy's not this guy's not yeah this guy's not saying day one i think most people would say that the muslim side actually won the debate he cut this in such a way that he makes it look like this guy is saying that the muslim side won the debate clearly mm -hmm. but th that's not what this guy is saying he's saying that uh that in a specific topic the christian side messed up and for people on the outside who are not very familiar with this, they would sit down and look at it and think, yeah, the Muslim side won. And then he and, goes on to explain why. And by, and by the way, I've, I've, I, I said the same thing. Like, if you know what Robert is talking about, you understand what Robert's talking. I'm assuming that's the topic they're, they're talking about because that's the one everyone jumped on and that's what the, what the Muslims jumped on. Uh, and yes, I've said the same. If you, have an, if, you, if you understand what Robert's talking about, he's making an important point. If you don't understand what he's talking about, if you didn't know anything about what he's talking about, and that that's kind of the that's kind of the problem with this sort of sort of discussion is you can bring up a point which you need to flesh out and might take you a while to flesh out, but you don't have the opportunity to flesh it out because they all jump on it and then they 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 go off. Um, but yeah, if you understand what Robert's talking about, that's one thing. If you don't, you would just look like he's dodging the issue, right? If he's saying, yeah. "Hey, there are things in the Bible that will make you uh, interpret this differently." Um, and uh, yeah, so that's the situation. So I, I wanted to ask Jake if I can. Uh, I, I, I'm I'm concluding that Jake is an absolute slime ball, man. <laughs> no, <laughs> no I, well, I came to I don't know. I I came to two different conclusions, and I actually asked him directly. I brought this clip to him. I said, "Hey, I just checked the context of this, and the guy is not saying that Muslims won the debate, and he agrees with them. He's saying it may look like that, and then he goes on to to discuss it and to disagree with the Christian side on on the on the whole morality aspect, but also eventually to disagree with you guys. So why in the world would you cut that clip to make it look like he is saying the Muslim side won? And how exactly is the, does that disprove what I said? That there is not a single person they can point at who says I watched the debate and I agree with the Muslim side, they won. And he then started, uh, you know, basically running from that, from the issue. And I said, okay, I, th there are two possibilities here. He's either not understanding what this guy is saying, and I got it the first time, or he's deliberately cutting this guy's video and posting it out of context in order to make it look like uh, a Catholic Christian here agrees with them and completely disagrees with the Christian side. So which one is it? Is he stupid or is he dishonest? Yeah, that's uh, that's the thing that always goes back to all these. Notice, theology matters. And this is the question that always comes up with Allah when he says that the Jews uh, worship Ezra and things like that. Uh, it's like, wait, is he ignorant? <laughs> is Allah just stupid? He doesn't know what the Jews are doing? Or does he know and he's lying? It always comes back to that in, in Islam and with Muhammad and with the Dawah guys. Like, it, it, I'll, I'll give you an example. When, when a Muslim says, oh, according to the Catholic encyclopedia, Mary was 12. Okay, are you simply not literate? You can't read and understand a passage? Or are, are you able to and you, you're, just, you're just flat out lying? Same thing with, oh, Rebecca was three. Are you able to read a text? Or... Like if you can't read a text and understand it, that's one thing, and that would just mean you're you're dumb and you need to go back to kindergarten and start over. Or are you? Do you actually know what it means? And you just you're lying about it. That's what that's what it comes down to. So notice, if this were all we had to go on, if this were all we had to go on, you might just think, okay, Jake, Jake, uh, yeah, Jake isn't very good at understanding anything. But when you see when you when behind the scenes you agree to four debates with the guy, he backs down every time and then calls you a coward and says you're running from him. Then I start to conclude this guy's this guy's just a liar. Like, you know what's the like funny thing God. here? You know what's the funny what? thing here? This guy actually eventually agrees that as a as a uh, Catholic, he acknowledges that the that the death penalty for apostasy is not applicable, and that the Pope declared it wrong as well, and that he does not agree with it. 
<laughs> so, but Jake argued that, that 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 Christians are only influenced by you know liberal uh, you know sec liberal politics and liberal ethics and secular humanism and all of that, which is why they are changing and corrupting Christianity, uh, and thereby getting rid of these laws. And then he marks this guy as a real Christian who calls out the other Christians and agrees with him, whereas this guy also says that the cap that capital punishment is not applicable. He just disagrees with the whole Im uh, inherently immoral part, and he says this because uh, because the because the Vatican itself declared that the death penalty is against uh, human dignity and shall not be applied. So, <laughs> Jake, you are a complete clown. You are a complete clown. Yeah, which is interesting because that'll actually make him fit right in with the Dawa, with the Dawa guys, right? I mean, if he's uh, if he's Daniel Hakikachu's new disciple, um, the, he'll fit right in, right? I mean, and this is this is what I find most amazing about this new uh this new Dawa trend. We've talked about this before, but you can see you can see it like where it's going now. Um, if you go back 15 or 20 years, the Dawa guys that were put forward to reach people in the West and to preach this, these guys were handpicked by Muslim organizations based on whether they could make Islam appealing to Westerners, right? So they pick people like Jamal Badawi and Shabir Ali and these kinds of guys who are going to go around and uh, make Islam seem really, really nice and wonderful and so on. Then you get to the internet age and any random Muslim can bypass that entire selection process and just go on YouTube and start rambling. But guess what? Now you can get cheered on by the Muslim community from around the world. Places like Pakistan and everyone start cheering you on. Hey, this guy's good. So notice, Dawah used to be what is going to be most appealing to Westerners. So let's gear it towards that. We'll make things up. We'll lie. We'll get we'll get people who are going to uh, you know say say that Islam is wonderful. And no, uh, no, there's no death penalty for apostates. No, there's no child bride. What are you talking about? These are all things that Islamophobes said. Now, Dawa is geared towards giving Muslims a kind of false confidence in their religion by all kinds of chest thumping, and everyone's running from us. Our powerful arguments, ha 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 ha, and that's all it is now. And uh, it's like it's like a it's like a clown show. It's like a clown show. And so now, notice now, you don't you don't seek your credentials but from some Muslim organization or something like that. Now you just have to get a following. And there's a system in place for you getting a following. Yes, now you run out and yes, of course we're gonna we're, of course we're gonna marry little girls, and of course we beat our wives into submission. Look at us, we're so based. Of course we're gonna kill apostates. And that gets you a lot of street cred with the Muslim community. So you develop a big uh, a big fan base really quickly. And so now if you're an up and coming Dawah guy like Jake, and that no one's ever heard of until you know I, I, when did I hear about him? Like last year, maybe. So, um, like if this. you're a new guy coming along, who do you want to, who do you want to be like? You want to be like, ah, everyone's scared of me. Everyone's running. Oh, we're so scared. And meanwhile, behind the scenes, you're backing down from debate after debate, even though you're the one challenging, yeah, challenging yeah, people yeah. on this. And then you back down. What is look this? At this look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. The Vatican publication by the Vatican, new revision of number two, two, six, seven of the catechism of the Catholic church on the death penalty, death penalty. This is not even just about uh, the death penalty for apostasy or specific death penalties. It is the death penalty altogether under uh, Pope Francis. Wait, just period for anything? Murder? Anything? Yes, anything. Wow. I think anything, right? I, 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 let's, let's read it. Let's read it. Let's read it. Because according to, J to Jake, real Christians, including that guy who is a Catholic Christian and who... <laughs> recognizes the authority of Pope Francis, real Christians recognize and follow these laws still. So let's see what Pope Francis uh, has to say about this, what the Vatican has to say about this. Um, da -da 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 -da. The death penalty, 2267, recourse to the death penalty on the part of a legitimate authority following a fair trial was long considered an appropriate response to the gravity of certain crimes and an acceptable, albeit extreme, means of safeguarding the common good. Today, however, there is an increasing awareness that the dignity of the person is not lost even after the commission of very serious crimes. In addition, a new understanding has emerged of the significance of penal sanctions 
imposed by the state. Lastly, more effective systems of detention have been deployed, which ensure the due protection of citizens, but at the same time do not definitely deprive the guilty of the possibility of redemption. Pay attention. Consequently, the church teaches in the light of the gospel that the death penalty is inadmissible because it is an attack on the inviolability and dignity of the person. And she works with determination for its abolition worldwide. Very interesting. You know what's interesting here is uh, the reasoning parallels a, a bit of what Robert was saying in the sense that your rule for right, your, 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 your rule for right, this is not meant to be some static thing where this, uh, this is always, um, it's always the same. And, and Muslims understand this. Muslims will believe that there is one rule for a time in Islam, and then it gets abrogated and replaced by something else. And when you ask them, why was that one rule in place? They'll say, ah, because that was what was best for, for, at that time. A little later, which they're talking about, like could be two days later, Something else happens, and then Allah changes the rule and gives a better rule. What you have here is, and this is something that that every anyone can think about. Um, I actually get some of the claims because a lot of the same things would apply uh, when understanding the the history of of Judaism and Christianity and so on. The idea that what God should have established, you know, thousands of years ago, is some sort of liberal democracy or something like that. It's like, guys, it. It, it, it kind of doesn't work like that. The world doesn't work like that. Notice what happens if you just go, when, when the United States would go over, Western nations would go over the Middle East and say, hey, we'll get rid of this dictator for you and you guys can have a, a liberal democracy. What happens? It crumbles. The people aren't, the people aren't ready for that yet. Uh, so I understand, okay, here's the situation that this nation is in. They're surrounded by enemies who want to crush them and so on. And you have to deal with that that sort of reality. Or you also have to deal with reality. Like, like, look at what this is saying. It's saying now you have a prison system. Now you have a prison Things system. Have you have you have you have guards. Uh, you can actually take someone who has 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 murdered somebody, and you don't have to kill him. You can actually put this guy in a cell for the rest of his life. And they're saying even that person's life is important, and you should give that person an opportunity for redemption by keeping him you have to keep him away from everyone else cuz he's a murderer but you you society has gotten to the point where we can put this guy no, aside no, 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 if you go back if you go back to some previous society where you don't have a prison system you don't have that kind of thing yeah the death penalty might make sense there for horrible crimes cuz you can't just let guys run around like this um no, it, notice in Islam, it's no, no that's, we, that's we, that's we secular always, humanism. That's secular humanism. Notice it's, about, that is secular humanism. They're specifically declaring it, saying, hey, in light of the gospel, in light of the gospel. No, it's secular and the humanism. Fact, and the fact that the way society has changed allows us, allows us to have more respect for human life than you could in the past, where you'd have to say reluctantly, okay, this guy killed somebody. What else are we going to do with him? Something like that, death penalty or something. It's because the Pope um, is a secular humanist, Christ, Catholic Christian. But notice what, what would Jake say? What would Jake say like this? So you say, Oh, this Pope said this, this Pope said this. The 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 Muslim mentality is pick the Pope that said what I agree with, and let's go with that. And that's yeah. the true, that's true Christianity. And if you say something else that I don't like, well, that's that's just secular liberal. These guys are a joke, man. The gospel is secular humanism. That's that's basically their logic. A serious. It's it's very it's as simple as that. These guys call anyone a secular humanist, a liberal, not a true Christian, fake Christian, liberal Christian, and this and that, simply yeah, because joke, they disagree with them yeah. publicly, simply because they have a disagreement, simply because uh, they say things that they don't agree with. And here you have. Uh, the Vatican condemning yeah. the entire death penalty, and you have Catholic Christians condemning the entire death penalty, but then they will go and call a Catholic Christian who recognizes the authority of the Vatican a real Christian, because that Christian seemingly does not disagree with them. And from that, what you get is that these people do not care about the truth. These Muslim apologists, so Dan Likikichu, uh, Jake, the Muslim metaphysician, they don't care about the truth. What they care about is whether you agree with their or you support their Islamic narrative or yeah. not. Yeah, this is this is all. Uh, and, and really, I, I don't think Jake takes him. I don't think Jake, if you really if you really made him admit 
if he takes his own argument seriously, I don't think he really believes what he's saying because it's it's absolutely he ridiculous the way he's interpreting Christianity. He's a liar. He's trying to block an objection to Islam. The objection is, hey, you guys call people Islamophobes for not wanting to die, right? A AP is under a death sentence if you guys ever get your way and get your precious Islamic state. And therefore, if anyone's justified in saying, don't follow Muhammad, it's the people who are on the receiving end of these Islamic death penalties and in response to that, they want to say, but everyone, everyone believes in killing apostates. And we say, no, we don't. And, it, and then the response is, but look at what Pope so-and-so said. And my response would be, okay, well, I'm, look, I'm looking at the commands of the covenant that I am under. I'm under the new covenant and the harshest penalty that the church could give. The harshest penalty for the church was excommunication. There's the door. You don't want to follow the rules of Jesus. There's the door. If you've done something big, you're going to have to deal with the yeah. with the uh, with the government. Um, but as far as if you don't want to follow the commands of Jesus, there's the door. That's the harshest penalty. And they say, uh, no, but later on, there's this thing. And I say, well, uh, on what planet do I think that that can trump the teachings of Jesus and the apostles? True. And they're saying, ah, but it's the church. The church, the Vatican says it. OK, what about when the Vatican says the opposite? Oh, well, they're just influenced by liberal. Wait, wait a minute. Wait, wait, what? Loose faith. I tell you, loose faith. I, I'm supposed I'm supposed to listen to the Pope when he agrees with you about something. But then if the Pope says something you don't agree with, we're not supposed to. What are we? AP, look at how this is supposed to work. We're not supposed to. Christians aren't supposed to go to the words of Jesus and say, OK, we're going to follow the commands that are that are directed towards us. Um, what we're supposed to do is go to Daniel Hakikachu and Jake, the Muslim metaphysician, and they're going to tell us which parts of the Bible we're supposed to agree with, which parts of uh, church history we're supposed to agree with, and they get to decide what is uh, liberalism and what is uh, and what is uh, what is good Christianity. And this is like the most insane and idiotic nonsense I've ever heard in my entire life. And their their fans love them for this. Why? Because uh, that was deception, ladies and gentlemen. It's just it's just keeping people. Keeping people stupid as dumb as possible, keeping people as confused as possible, hoping that your your birth rates take over and you eventually can silence us all America's through violence. Problems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Homosexuality should be fine. Yeah. So no, basically, what you what you just said. Uh, but I, I want I want to look at I want to bring out the dirty laundry here. Um, Jake is still welcome to message me back and to uh, join here. I don't know, maybe he unblocked me. Oh, no, yeah. it says you can no longer send any messages to this person. That's very bad. So here's Don't him. worry, he's watching. I mean, he watches everything we put out. Here, here's him canceling. Uh, <laughs> so Wait, so we, agree, we agreed here. Look, we agreed here. Uh, he made five conditions. He said, no mocking or attacking Allah, the prophets, or revered figures. If you do so, I will leave immediately. No muting or kicking. The discussion remains one-on-one -on -one between the two of us only. You cannot bring up any, uh, other random issues. Our discussion is limited to what was said on that, blah, 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 whatever. I said, yeah, okay. Um, so wait, wait, wait! You gave him you you agreed to all that. I agreed to all that. Yes. So you, so you, he wants to debate. I said he look fair. So <laughs> I don't. You're you're giving this guy everything he wants, and then he backs. Wait. So why does he? How does he back out? When's why he back does he back out? out? Well, it's right here. Um, you said something. Cool. You said something about you re because cool. you retweeted Ben Shapiro yeah. or something. Sunday, uh, everything was cool. Monday. He suddenly sent me this message. He sent me my retweet of Ben Shapiro and said, so can you. You can cancel your stream, scumbag. <laughs> and, and what he sent me is, is this. So I retweeted this. Uh, ben Shapiro tweeted, and they can F right off in response to this, which says, just in the UN Special Rapporteur for Human call Rights. Call for a truce. So they call for a truce. We are horrified by what is happening, and we call for a truce. And Ben Shapiro said, and they can F right off. And I retweeted that. So he sent this to me and said, so can you. You can cancel your stream, scumbag. <laughs> Wait, you're a scumbag. For... <laughs> Wait, isn't it? By the way, isn't this insane? It's uh, all the terrorists. They go around. They kill a bunch of people, take a bunch of hostages, run back to Gaza. And then the UN says, all right, truce time. Like, wait, what? <laughs> they just took a bunch of hostages <laughs> and killed a bunch of people. And then they ran, ran and hid. And we want to go get them. We want to go. No, we can't get them. Truce, 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 everyone. That's like that's like me walking up and just punching the guy right in the face and saying, hey, come on, calm down, calm down, man. Peace, peace, peace. 
This is the very same guy who said on PBD podcast repeatedly that uh, apostates should be executed, Uh that blasphemers should be executed. Um, And if you listen to him, Christians are, if you listen to Daniel and Jake, Christians are supposed to be obsessed with just slaughtering everyone who disagrees with us. Like, hey, we should, we should just be, think about this AP, because this is, this is the insane part. He's telling people like me, you, he would say you have, you have no moral basis for anything. So you could say, nope, exterminate them all. I have no moral framework. Just get it out of the way. Uh, me, I'm supposed to be saying, nope, anyone who, re- who rejects Jesus has to be slaughtered in the name of Jesus. So, so, oh, let's, it's good that everyone's fighting. Let them all kill each other and do our work for us. Ha ha. Instead, no, where's your sympathy guys? Where's your sympathy for all these people? It's yeah, so like, I, wait, I mentioned- make up your mind. Am I supposed <laughs> to be a good Christian and want everyone dead in the name of Jesus? That's your definition of a good Christian. But when that definition doesn't fit and you want us to be sympathetic, then it's, oh, guys, think about the kids. Think about the kids. Wait a minute. You're the one telling us we should we should want dead kids. Plus, what plus the they also mocked, guy, they mocked Brother Rishi for days because uh, he became very passionate about uh, them wanting to oh, kill Oh, he's, he's sad. He's sad because he doesn't want apostates to be that killed. They want, me, they want me killed. They want people like me killed. And they made fun of him for that. For days after this, I look at this, he's crying, he's so emotional. Ah, ah. And then he cancels the debate, which he arranged with me because of me retweeting that the UN should not ask for a truce now. This was on day one, I believe, wasn't it? It was Monday. Uh, this this is your guy. This guy is okay with slaughtering population, coward, coward, fighting coward. disbelievers, taking slaves, executing blasphemers, executing apostates. If you complain about that, you are just uh, you're just being emotional and crying, and you you can be laughed about. But because I said truce now, no, because I retweeted that he's like you're a scumbag. Yeah. Mystery. and and he really noticed him and Daniel think that that Christians now are supposed to be living to the for. Uh, 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 <laughs> According to the Old Testament, right? The New Test, the New Testament, the New Covenant is just for when you don't have power. As soon as you get in power, then you go Old Testament. And and notice in the Old Testament, in the Old Testament, one of the biggest things was like destroying idols and so on. And yet, so so according to Daniel, <laughs> according to Daniel and Jake, I sh- I as a Christian should be focused on on destroying idols because that's 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 the Old Testament. And yet they whine like they whine like babies. When we do not handle their their book with extreme reverence, so notice, uh, oh, you Christians, you should be you should be obsessed with living according to Old Testament law, killing and slaughtering anyone who disagrees with you, destroying idol. Oh, okay, so so what's going to happen? What's what's going to happen when we do it? No, oh, don't do it. Why 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 aren't you why aren't you thinking about our feelings? Think about the feelings of Muslims around the world when you do stuff like that. Make up your yeah, mind, yeah. guys. What do you want us? What do you want us to be like? Because because uh, because because you define Christianity for us, right? So you tell just give us some sort of consistent message on how we're supposed to live. Because you're we're getting completely opposite messages. We're getting messages where no Christians are supposed to love everyone. They're supposed to love Muslims. They're supposed to love all the all the children of the world. You Christians are supposed to live like that. So so guys, you should be on our side of this conflict. And then they'll turn right around when we're pointing out uh, apostasy laws. And you Christians are supposed to kill everyone. That's what you're supposed to be like. Like, guys, wait, Black Angel just said, uh, let AP please play the Kaaba video to show how smart Jake is. I forgot about that video. Oh, I don't know I what forget. you're talking about. What are you I talking forget. about? <laughs> I completely forgot about this video. Wait. Welcome. I don't want to play the whole thing. This was a very sarcastic video on my part in response to Jake, the most beneficial. <laughs> Hi everyone and welcome, this is the Apostate Prophet. I recently made this post, which as everyone can tell is a very serious post, in which I announce my very serious intentions of taking over the Kaaba yeah. and converting it into something else. <laughs> I said, my ultimate mission How did I miss this? is to take over the Kaaba, to purify it from Islamic elements, and to rightfully turn it into a temple where everyone is welcome, as it should be. I think everyone will be okay with that. Can't wait. And then I posted a photo on which you can see the Kaaba, just to bring you closer to the idea that this cube can easily be taken and turned into something different. For a good purpose, of course. My intentions here are very clear. I want to take the Kaaba and rightfully turn it into a different temple where everybody is welcome and where everybody can worship. 
or think. Or... I, I, you, you can probably guess that he completely misses the point and uh, <laughs> takes it too seriously. <laughs> or meditate or do whatever they want. The logistics of it are a little bit difficult, but I'm sure it can be arranged. I'll just go there, march there, take it over and do this. This is not a joke, brothers and sisters. Unfortunately, a Muslim apologist did not receive this very well. He reacted very angrily to this. I don't understand why. My ultimate mission is to take over the Kaaba, to purify it from its own elements, and to write- Oh my goodness, look at what, look at what atheists are doing! They're here to destroy everything! Why shouldn't they? <laughs> like, what a dope, man. See, now, notice, we're back to, we're back to, is he stupid or does he know what he's doing? I, I don't, I really don't know. I really can't tell. <laughs> Into a temple where everyone is welcome as it should be. I think everyone will be okay with that. Can't wait. You go and you make this post? Oh, you just really want an honest conversation? And then you say, your ultimate mission is to take over the Kaaba? <laughs> Are you kidding me? You should never post and claim that your ultimate mission of everything is to take over the Kaaba. I think everyone will be okay with that. I can't wait. Even though he obviously knows that Muslims wouldn't be okay with that. So he's taking a dig. He's mocking. He's playing around. He's joking. He's making fun of people. And if you think that that is actually going to be conducive to honest conversations with Muslims, then you are delusional. But I don't think that you're that dumb. I think you're that dishonest. That you really don't want to have honest conversations with Muslims. And posts like this demonstrate that. Time and time again. I can go through post after post after post. Now, this is equivalent to, to me. Two hours later. We're pulling the mask off of you. You're a fraud. You're a phony. Nobody believes you now. <laughs> I got exposed. Oh, you've been exposed. Your true colors. The true color. <laughs> You've got to love these guys, man. <laughs> oh my god! Hey, hey, I'm I'm sending you a. I'm, someone reposted it. I sent you in. I sent you in the a private chat. This is so hey, stupid. Hey, play 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 a little of this. It's footage from inside the Kaaba. <laughs> oh man, this guy. You've been exposed. This guy. This guy. <laughs> Is there music in here that I shouldn't play or what? Uh, no. Okay. Oh, this Act is this is footage from inside the camera. Yeah. Yeah. In case anyone's ever wondering what what the inside of the Kaaba looks like, here it is. <sighs> Isn't that cool. Oh yeah. Set up the camera. Camera set up. <laughs> <laughs> Good. When, right. well, when, uh, when was this? What? When was this? When did I go inside the Kaaba? Yeah. When did you uh, go there? That was a while back. I actually break it down. I actually break down the situation right here. What's funny is I still, you guys can still see me in that shirt. I've got the same clothes I've had forever anyway. That's fine. Well, let's record this before they change their minds and make us leave. Hello, everyone. As you can see, this message is coming to you from inside Islam's holiest site. Hey, it looks like you were a much more reasonable person back then. Like you looked much calmer. And stuff. I was. Yeah. Yeah. Ye yeah. Years of Dawah will change you, man. Yeah. But for nearly 14 centuries, non-Muslims haven't been allowed to visit the Kaaba. Thanks to Surah 9, <laughs> verse 28 of the Quran, which says that idolaters cannot approach the sacred mosque because they're not just soon filthy. Uh, no, 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 it can't be true. That's not what the Quran says. It's Surah 9, verse 28. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this is, uh, this is me, uh, and that was me inside the Kaaba. You know what's you know, funny? Because uh, I recorded that in front of a, a, a green screen, obviously. Yeah. Um, and then there was this not, not everyone knows. You should have said that. Not everyone yeah. knows. Well, what, what's crazy is, so there's this footage going around of that someone had gone inside the Kaaba and recorded. And I was like, ooh, I could I could uh, green screen myself. So I recorded myself in front of a green screen. And then I go to Nabil. This was in Texas. Me and Nabil were going to a, con a conference down there. And I said, hey, Nabil, have you seen that, that footage from inside the Kaaba? And he goes, no, there's footage inside the Kaaba. I've never seen inside there. And I said, uh, I said, here, check it out. And as soon as I started playing it, as soon as I started playing, the camera goes around. Nabil goes, you're going to be in here, aren't you? And I go, yep. So uh, anyway, <laughs> I guess he, he knew me. He knew me by then. And hey, uh, 
Hey, Jake will now make a response for you. This, like, you see, he uh -huh. accidentally admitted that this was actually a green screen. This is how <laughs> this honest they are. Here, here's what's here's what's hilarious. Uh, so I was still editing it. Me and Nabil are in the hotel room that night, and that like there's a little clicking sound. There's a little clicking sound, but I made it look like I was put going on a, a tripod there. Um, and I was like, I need a clicking sound. And we just used the the uh, the the telephone in the um, in the hotel room. I was like, hey, I record the audio of this, and I recorded a little clicking sound of me hanging up a phone. That's all that is. Um, and then I put that in there, and I'm about to post, and I go. I bet someone's going to think I actually went in there. <laughs> I said, I bet someone's going to actually think it's real. It was like between a third and a half of people who thought it was real. Right. And like, and, uh, and they're saying, David, I'm having this discussion with my, with my Muslim friend. And he says, you didn't really go inside the Kaaba. So how do I prove that you did? And I was like, wait, you, you took that, wait, you're taking that seriously. Cause like my, my explanation at the beginning of how I got in there, I'm like, you may have heard that that non-Muslims aren't allowed inside the Kaaba, but I went up there and I said, hey, President Obama says Islam's a religion of peace and tolerance. So they gave me a golden ticket and I get to go around the Kaaba now. Not to be and confused like, with golden shower. Yeah, so it's, I, I give this ridiculous scenario where I actually went up to Mecca and I said, hey, President Obama says let me in. And then they let me inside the Kaaba. <laughs> I was like, you actually... You don't understand joking when you see it at, at that level. Uh, yeah. So anyway, there are still I, people. I, I, there are still people who think I, I went inside the Kaaba because look, of I, President uh, Obama. You, you probably you did. I agree with you. You need to stop admitting that. You peace be upon you. And I find it very, very disrespectful of you. Peace be upon you, dear Prophet. Peace be upon you. Because that's exactly Muslim metamorphosis did not. My ultimate mission is to take over the Kaaba, See? to purify it from idols and rightfully turn it into a house where only Muslims are welcome as it should be. I don't care if everyone is okay with that. They have to be okay with that because that's what Allah wants. Can't wait. He didn't react to this at all. He's okay with his prophet mm. saying this. Weird. Terrible. And they're okay. Uh, we've, we've, uh, we've pointed this out. Um, Muhammad said, I will expel the Jews and Christians from the Arabian Peninsula and will not leave any but Muslims. So Muhammad was fine with saying, hey, you've been here with you've been here for centuries. Your communities have been here for centuries, but I just want Muslims here. So everyone else get out. Muhammad can say and whatever he wants. And they're totally okay. fine with that when that's not what happened with with Israel. But that's what they say happened with Israel. And they condemn it. They say, hey, the Jews just said, hey, everyone get off the land. We're here now and push people off land that they've been on for centuries and so on. And that's what they say happened. And they condemn it. It's like, that's exactly what your prophet did. What you're condemning didn't happen, but it happened with your prophet and you're fine with it. You hypocrites. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's jump through this. Powerful. So. I said to him when he's cancelled, I said, LOL, knew you would find a dumb reason to cancel it. Didn't think it would be this pathetic. Guy who probably <laughs> believes in killing people for their beliefs and opinions and ignores publicly broadcast massacre and rape of civilians is outraged because... It Sounds like a Dawa guy. A retaliation is an order. That's Dawa. And I just said, I'll just go ahead and demonstrate to the public how you lied then. And he said, no, you'll just demonstrate how you're a retarded, lying piece of shit like always. Wow. <laughs> And I said, classy, classy. Keep, supporting keep supporting rapists. rapists. He does. Him him, and Daniel. Yeah, and he said, keep supporting killing of babies like you always do, scumbag. Do, do, wait, do, do we support killing of babies? Never have I ever. No, but him and Daniel say, I'm supposed to. And they say that you have no back, no moral framework to condemn anything. And therefore, you should have no problem with it, right? Yeah. Guys, once yeah. again, yeah. what they're telling us our morality is, if we actually listen, not, not to what they, I'm talking about what they say we should be claiming. This is what they say. Hey, they're saying, hey, if you're an atheist, this is your position. They're saying, if you're a Christian, then this should be your position. And then they tell us the exact opposite when it's convenient. Why, why is Jake so, why are these Muslim apologies so always emotional? emotional? So they have emotional. no arguments. No oh, argument. no, cry, so cry more, cry more. Oh, that's what they said to Rashid. Why, why are they so emotional? Well, this, look at you. So crying, oh, cry babies. Embarrassing. They're so this emotional. Is, this is man. hilarious, man. Terrible, 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 terrible. So emotional. It's like a little girl. So emotional, man. So emotional. See, they have been embarrassed. Pure emotion. Pure emotion. When when it's they're they're emotional when it's convenient. They uh they're they they mock emotions when it's convenient. Everything is just everything is whatever they feel at the moment. Oh wait, you know what happened here? I sent him uh, that video of that uh, that girl, Shani Luke, who is uh. 
who was brutally killed and put on the back of a pickup truck and paraded among the Palestinians who spat on her and all that. And she was stripped naked on the back of the pickup truck. I sent that video to him and said, thoughts? And then he blocked me. And he said, he said, uh, he said, huh? uh, what? I don't see anything. <laughs> I don't see any. I don't see it. What? What are you talking about? Why are you support killing babies? Yeah. Instead, you should support killing babies because you're an atheist. He had nothing, nothing to say about you it. You no shouldn't problem. support killing babies. You should just support killing babies. Hey, I... Please, insane. please don't say anything disrespectful about Mohammed. Uh, by the way, we think you should be killed. Um... But what is actually funnier is one thing here. And now I want everybody to pay attention. You are commanded to pay attention. All right. Uh, so he published a video in which he said... I don't know why they use that picture, Rashid. I love that picture, Rashid, where he's, where he's like... <laughs> I will, I will, I will. So he sent me this thing and said, start by admitting you were either ignorant of the fact presented in this video, facts presented, or you're just a liar like your Christian buddies. I still haven't really we're watched We're liars, we're liars, because we say we don't support killing yeah. everyone in the name of Jesus. I haven't really watched the video. I only watched uh, parts of it. I said I will look through it. Um, and then we had a brief discussion about who is and is not a fake Christian because he claims people who say that, you know, that killing a prostitute is not part of, of Christianity are fake Christians and so on. Then he sent me a video, which I don't want to open because it's, okay, I'll just open it here, I guess. According to his understanding of Christianity, in Christianity, apostates should be executed too. You disagree with that. You don't think that is true. We know that is not true. I've never heard a single Christian ever who held that position. And if... Pause. David, what do you think you said here? What do you think that was in reference to? Was it in reference to... What, it it wouldn't be apostate. It wouldn't be killing apostates because there ha that has been a thing, right? Yeah, right. Especially, yeah, yeah, I've, I've heard you say that before so many times. Yeah. What I'm, <laughs> I, I don't know because I've said lots of stuff. If I had to guess, I, I would probably be saying that about their their insane view. Where, uh, yes, we have the the teachings of the gospel. That's until we get political power. Once we get political power, then we go full Old Testament, and we're under those commands. I've never, I've never seen anyone say that. I've never heard that before. And that's exactly what Muslims are saying is supposed to be the position of Christianity. If, if I so let's clarify one thing. I've heard this from you before, but as you said in the past, do you agree that there have been Christians who have interpreted the scripture and and have said that apostates can be executed? Um. I don't, I mean, I don't even know what they're interpreting to mean that as far as if a Christian says, if a Christian leader or something like that says we're going to kill apostates or a Christian theologian says we're going to kill apostates, I can't think of anything that they're getting that from as okay, far okay, as. Okay, but, but you agree that Christians did. I agree that Christians have said that. That was, okay. a, that was an issue. There, in fact, there were, there were even, you could even find people who are willing to sentence you to death for, from like leaving Catholicism for Protestantism or. Or vice Excellent. versa, and so on. So Excellent. you have you have things like that. I'm just looking at the New Testament, and going, where are you possibly getting this from? And the only the only the only way I can think of getting this is in the New Testament. You also so you have the church, the rules of the church, David, 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 and then you have and then you have the let's government. Let's stay on topic. Let's stay on topic. Let's stay on the question. Okay. Let's stay on the question. Okay. I really don't want to interrupt you with that, but let's stay on the question because it's very important. Okay. So you said in the past that there have been Christians who did yes. say. Uh, or who, who did believe in executing people and executing people for that's apostasy, that's but, indisputable because yes. that that is that is and yes and I would say it's where I, I heard I you would say that ask before. those Christians where are you getting that from yeah of course yeah. there are of so, course there were so therefore I'm pretty sure that what you're referring to here is not uh, that you have what you're saying here is not that you have never heard of Christians who think that apostates should can, can be executed right no I would not say that I've yeah. never heard a single Christian ever who held that position. And every last Christian. Okay. But he put this in the clip. Now I didn't even go further after this, but this is what he's what he's what he's saying, what he's implying. He's implying that you say here that you have never heard of a single Christian 
who holds the position that apostates may be executed. Not something I would say. As soon as I saw this, I thought, wait a minute, that that, that can't be true. I, I specifically heard you confirm many you times can, that, you can that, find, that was the case. Yeah, you can find a Christian at some point in history who would defend almost anything. Yeah. I mean, if you're talking so, about 2,000 years of Christians, you can find people who supported all kinds of things. So I thought, wait a minute, something is really wrong here. What is going on? He, he can't just take this so badly out of context and lie so blatantly right oh wait do you have the do you have the do you have what the original was about wait a minute, i just opened it what you it don't even have it man <laughs> what planet are you from wait, no i opened it oh, wait, I opened gosh it really, amateur really, hour man <laughs> i just amateur wanted to hour. make now I you can't even refute him i wanted to make a dramatic transition to that right now and i just messed it up so. you really screwed uh, this up man. <laughs> Okay, let me open the video. Uh, so, oh, here it is. Boy. Here it is. Wait a minute. Okay, okay. I closed it specifically because I already sent that to him. I clipped it and sent it to him in a message. So let's get back to that. Oh, so you clipped him what I actually said, and it wasn't what he said. What was it about? Was it was it what here, I just here, here? Watch it. Watch here. Here. Maybe my memory is really bad at the moment. So can you help me out by clipping and showing me an instance uh, where a Christian has ever said that, or? Um, because your clip doesn't show that. And then he said, then stop messaging me because you are a dishonest scumbag, which is very weird because I just thought, wait a minute, this guy is lying. He said, um, then I said, wow, I actually went to the stream to see the context of your clips. <clears throat> and you called me dishonest and I posted it. And here is the clip. Oh my gosh, this is ridiculous. Man. This is this is the worst <sighs> live stream I've ever seen. This is oh, David, David Wood admits that it. it's the worst live stream ever. Here, here, look. Enemies and so on. It wasn't, hey, up until and loving your enemies and so on. It wasn't, hey, up until you get political power, then slaughter everyone. So, but their actual position, their actual position, this is their position. You can ask Jake and Daniel if this is their position. Their position is the teachings of Jesus as part of the covenant that you were under are only in effect until you get political power and then you go old then you then you are under the old the old testament and you have to uh, uh obey laws about uh, uh killing people uh, you know who do things and uh, it's just it's just like i've never heard a single christian ever oh liar liar you should you should make a short video on that so people can circulate and get the idea you, for what the, you know what this is did, did you see what just happened here guys did you catch that i said hey Here's their method that they're saying that that this is what applies to Christianity. Um, the teachings of Jesus in the new covenant are just until you get political power. Then you go old covenant, and that's what takes over, because that's what they sound like they're saying to me. I said, I've never heard a Christian who said that. And then there was, and then he takes, Jake takes a clip of me saying, I've never heard a Christian say that. And he makes it sound like I've never heard of a Christian who believes in the death penalty for apostates. And then, ha, 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 I'm going to refute David on this. David's a liar. When, I dude, hope some Muslims are goodness, watching man. this. This is a clear they don't. They won't care. They won't care even slightly. His your, guy, your guy is lying so blatantly. He's taking a clip. They do not care. Cutting the context out and lying so Does blatantly. Doesn't bother them. Wow, man. And loving your enemies Here's and so stream. on. Here's the live stream. I went back and went actually to the live stream because I, I, th I thought, wait a minute, this can't be right. So I bothered to actually go back to the live stream find the section where you're talking about this and then listen to what you say just because i was almost convinced that this is that he's lying he's so, learning dawah he's learning he's learning that he's learning the tricks of the trade yeah. like what what command of you know jesus did, when, when jesus talking about laying down your weapons and uh and loving your enemies and so on it wasn't hey up until you get political power then slaughter everyone so but their actual position their actual position this is their position you can ask jake and Daniel, if this is their position, their position is the teachings of Jesus as part of the covenant that you were under are only in effect until you get political power. And then you go old, then you, then you are under the old, the old Testament. You have to uh, uh, obey laws about uh, uh, killing people uh, you know, who do things. And uh, it's, just, it's just like, I've never heard a single Christian ever who held that position. And they are saying, no, this is, we get to define Christianity and this is what, this is the context here. David is clearly not saying that
that he has never heard of a single Christian who interprets, uh, you know, <laughs> who interprets the, the scripture uh, in a in a in a in a violent or punitive way, and who thinks apostates should be put to death. Nothing to do at all with with that. We are dealing. It's wild, man. We are. It, I mean, how do all of their Dawa guys end up like this? Like, what what Dawa guy is not a compulsive liar? Who's, who's actually who's actually popular? I'm sure you can find I'm sure you can find some uh, insignificant Dawa guy somewhere who is truthful and so on. But I mean, of the guys, they, they just, those guys don't become popular. The liar, the compulsive liars, become popular. The ones who back down from debate after debate after debate, even though they're the one challenging people, <laughs> they they're the heroes. And uh, er, er, those who the people who agree to debate them, they're the cowards. He it's, will not acknowledge this. Thing. He will not acknowledge that he was wrong. He will not acknowledge that he lied. That he uh, that he is. I mean, maybe he's really stupid enough not to understand what is going on, and he thought that is what you're saying. I don't know, but uh, he won't even acknowledge that. He won't acknowledge any of it. He will just be quiet about this, not talk about it, and hope that it is, it is not brought up to his face that he is dishonest and that he clearly cuts things to lie. And you know, things like these. Things like these, David, make me think that maybe some of these people are not really Muslims. Then they, they don't really believe, and, and they're just doing this for I don't know, so for some for some benefits, and they just say whatever the whatever the hell they want to make yeah. their points. Because how can you be so blatantly and so openly lying to everybody, and then just you know try to get away with that? It's just it's incredible to me, man. Look, they, look at this. Look at this. Christian. The the, the video is called Christians caught. Lying about yeah. apostasy laws. That's what's amazing. They'll accuse you of lying, even though he's the one who's lying. It's it's amazing. I mean, it's absolutely amazing. Look at this. according to his understanding of Christianity, in Christianity, apostates should be executed too. You disagree with that? You don't think that is true? We know that is not true. I I don't even want to check the context of that one. You know, <laughs> never heard a single Christian ever who held that position. And every last Christian in the world knows, well, that's not how we understand or have ever understood our Bible. Pretty, and uh, I, I didn't go back and check this one, but as far as I remember, this is also taken out of context and misrepresented because Robert Spencer does not think that, yeah. that there's that no, no there's no happens. way there's no way Robert was saying no Christian has ever supported the death penalty for pussy. So. And and Jake is posting this. Jake is posting these clips to try and make it look like we are all saying that no Christian has ever thought that in Christianity uh, apostates can be or should be executed. That's clearly not what is happening. I know that that is not true, which is why I won't. I wouldn't say that. David knows that is not true, which is why he wouldn't say that. Robert knows that is not true, which is why he would not say that. So why in the world would he make this clip here? This is just such a huge lie. <laughs> That's Dawa. That's Dawa. Notice, in in if you're wondering why these guys are so comfortable lying, because I'm, I've said it before. I I went to prison, guys. I've never I so I've I've encountered every kind of liar, con man, everything else. I've never seen people who lie as freely and openly as the Dawa guys. Never. I've never seen bigger liars than the. In, the champions of Dawa. Uh, and they actually just, they believe that it's good. They believe that it's good. Like if you lie about a bunch of people and lie about Islam and lie about Christianity and the results of all your lying is that you convince someone to, to remain confident in Islam or to convert to Islam, Hey, you know, that person's going to paradise because of your lies. Remember what Ali Dawa said? He said, oh, yeah, because of the scientific miracles that, that brought me to Islam, Allah used those lies. He used those lies to get me to be a Muslim. And now I'm staying. Allah what, lied to me, but I'm saying, of it. Notice his reasoning. Allah uses the lies. Allah uses the lies of the Dawa guys for people's good. Once you Once you're convinced that, hey, God wants you running around lying for your religion to convert as to dupe as many people as as possible into you know going to paradise for all their virgins. Um, it's good. It's a good thing to do. Hey, that also implies that Allah is lying to them. So Adawa is saying Allah lied to me and lured me into Islam by lying me. But we're proud of that. Yeah, that's Islam for you. So Robert, um, 
I wanted to have Robert on here as well, but I, I want to. I don't want to make this too long. I want to leave soon. Uh, but he said I'm chipping in ten bucks to help the search for the honest Dawa guy. Robert, uh, everyone, everyone, chip in for AP's search for the for an honest Dawa guy. Yes, hey, yes. hey, hey! You should do. You should get a lantern. <laughs> you should get a lantern. Like uh, that was a that was Diogenes, right? But uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So you should get a lantern like this and just walk around to mosques and stuff like this with someone filming. Going, <laughs> I'm looking for an honest Dawa guy. Have you seen one? You could no, be thought, walk, should, walking through train stations I and stuff. I'm looking right for in here. Yeah, I thought I should hang it there and, and and ask for people to help. Look, look at this. Here's uh to further understand the context. So, uh, if it wasn't clear that Jake is actually misconstruing everything here and and uh. And, and not talking about apostasy laws. You can listen to this now. That's just in the Old Testament. No Christian ever interpreted it that way. Oh, no. But really? The greatest Christian theologian Who said that? did. By excommunicating him liar. and separating him from the church and furthermore delivers him to the secular tribunal to be exterminated thereby from the world by death. So here he's, it's clear as day. With the context that he provides here in the end, it is very clear that what he's saying is that we claim that no Christian has ever, ever interpreted the Christian scripture in such a way and argued that the death penalty can be applied to apostates or blasphemers. None of us have ever said that. Yep. Jake, if you think that we said that, then you might be stupid. He doesn't. He doesn't. He knows. But at this point, okay, Jake is not this stupid. He knows what he's doing. He knows his fans will love him for it. <laughs> Jake, it's the exact same thing as like Sheikh Uthman. Oh, I got ketchup all over me. Oh, I'm a victim of a hate crime. They know they will not be held accountable for anything they do. Jake, if you really want to uh, boost your, your popularity, hey, man, uh, just squirt some uh, ketchup all over yourself and say, we came and did it. We 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 got you. And say, oh, they got me. And you, you'll... you'll uh, and matter of fact, you can keep lying after that and say, yes, then uh, the man was caught and, and they were prosecuted. Matter of fact, you can even say it was us. You could say David Wood and the apostate prophet, they came and they stabbed me and now they're <laughs> in prison. And we could be on, we could be we could be on camera live streaming later on. Not one, not one of your fans will have any problem with you lying like that or being completely exposed. They just don't care. Hey, look at this. Look How at this. do you condition a community to be like this? I don't know. I'm, I'm still conflicted. I still give him the benefit of the doubt and, th and think that he's completely retarded or something. I don't know. But uh, I sent him this and said, and you call me dishonest. You clip this and make it look like David argues no Christian ever held the position that these verses may be applied violently. But what he's saying here is completely different. You can now either correct yourself and take back your public smear campaign or I will do it for you. Uh, or even better, I'll have an online discussion with you and so on. Uh, I said, I don't even get it. Do you not understand what is said in the video? Do you understand, but you think everyone else is retarded? Or do you really just misunderstand it, but hastily use it to frame your opponents? And, and, then, and then you're the one who's brain said, deaf. You're brain deaf, brain dead. Uh, <laughs> I said, all right. I have only one question. According to you, according to you for understanding, is David Wood saying in that very clip that he has never heard of a single Christian who interprets the passages in a violent way and or thinks executing people is justified? Yes or no? He likes yes or no questions. We have seen it. Uh, he doesn't respond. He says, since you're so dishonest, I will help you with further context of what David is saying. Further context? I just asked you a question. Mm -hmm. But uh, let's see. If what... leader were to come out and say, hey, yep, we've decided that... Uh... We've decided that the uh, the uh, the old the Old Testament punishment, contrary to everything we're commanded in Christianity, actually applies. And we're going to kill anyone who who uh, entices people to worship other gods, and uh, we're we're, we're going to execute them. That would that would be newsworthy. That would be all over the news. Christian says everyone uh, people have to be killed, and so on. But yeah, these guys do it. So here in, the, in this clip, David, are you saying at any point that no Christian ever held the position that... <laughs> no. I, I mean, I think it's very clear what I was saying. That these guys the run around. These guys run around. Yes, we're going to kill apostates. Yes, we're going to kill apostates. Yes, we're going to kill apostates. We want to kill apostates. And everyone, oh, okay, they want to kill apostates. That's fine. And if a, But if a Christian leader started doing that, hey, we're going to kill apostates, it would be international news. Jake, this has nothing to do at all with what, what a you're liar, talking man. about. Are you dumb? you're seriously taking him? You're seriously giving this dude the benefit of the doubt at this point? I mean, point, man? he he sends me he sent me he sends me the clip directly while he's interacting with me, and I I feel like that's if true. He, it's if like he was if he was lying to me, or if yeah. he was lying, why would he argue and try to make his point? Maybe he he thinks that 
I, I don't I don't understand, but he's directly arguing with me and trying to bring this as evidence. Doesn't this just reinforce my uh, perception that he's probably completely stupid and he doesn't understand anything? I, uh, everybody can listen to Welcome this. Welcome to Dawah. This is not evidence for what he's arguing here. I said he not even here is he saying that no Christian ever keep in keep position. in mind keep in mind how things work in his community. He can say anything and then provide anything as justification because his followers are too stupid to follow anything. In other words, if he were if you were to challenge him with his followers watching and say that's not what David said, he could post this clip and say, you see, keep in mind, the, the, these, this is the exact same community that if you say, <laughs> I can say, hey, Allah, according to the Quran, Allah prays for Muhammad. And Hijab can get up and say, ha ha, he says she prays to Muhammad. Never said that. It's not to Muhammad, it's for Muhammad. And the crowd will burst into cheers, right? They're not following what anyone is saying. So if Jake were to post this for his community and say, you see, AP challenged me on this, but here's David saying it, even though I'm not saying it at all. The, his entire community would go, wow, that's conclusive proof. That's wait, how wait, they wait, are. Wait, it's, what it's the insane, hell? Man. What? Are you kidding me? What? Uh, what somebody just mentioned uh, something about the news. Uh, what? You probably you probably have no idea who Cristiano Ronaldo is. but uh, That's a uh, soccer player. I've heard that guy. Yeah, he's one of the most famous only, but yeah, whatever. Uh, <laughs> wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. What? Did that say he's facing lashes? Wait, what? Cristiano Ronaldo facing 99 lashes for Iranian adultery charge. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Cristiano Ronaldo might want to avoid Iran for a while. Iranian ma media reports that there have been sever several lawsuits filed against the Al Nasser star. He, he recently started playing for his Saudi Arabia team, which is a very stupid move. After he hugged and kissed artist Fatima Hamimi on the cheek to thank her for a gift of two paintings. Ronaldo could be staring down 99 lashes as punishment for adultery <laughs> in the form of touching a woman while in a relationship. <laughs> if I if I were if I were him, I would go right to Iran and say, yeah, let's let's see you do this. I want to see this. Let's get this on film. Come on. Let's what do you got? Wow, man. This would be hilarious. <laughs> I would take it. I'd take the 99. I, I mean, I don't think they would do it, but I would I would challenge them to actually do it. Okay, I haven't heard anything about this, but this is this looks like a legitimate media article. So I don't know why I need I need to I need to check what's going on here. This is weird weird. Uh Barstool Sports TMZ reported it. New York Post reported it. Others reported it. Some people say it's been debunked. I don't I don't know. I don't know what this is, but I'm not sure. Somebody mentioned it. I looked it up, and the news have it. <laughs> That's but it. It wouldn't be implemented. It couldn't be implemented anyway. So I don't know. But it's just very, very strange. So anyway, here we have him lying. So I, I repeated my question and said, "All right, this question again is David saying this in that video response." Then he said, he's not merely saying no Christian held that you couldn't kill apostates until you have power. He's explicitly saying that Christians didn't believe that the Old Testament law for apostates applied any longer. So he's saying that you can't find Christians that believe the apostates should be killed, which would invalidate Daniel's claim about them believing they should be killed. Is this true, David? In those clips that I just played, or in your life ever, uh, in general, do you argue that you can't find Christians that believed the apostates should be killed? Um, is, is this news to you? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Talking about his in their insane methodology, <laughs> their insane methodology of, hey guys, all right, Jesus died on the cross for our sins and rose from the dead and he gave us all these commands. Keep in mind, they're only in effect until we take over the Roman Empire, and then we can start killing everybody and go back Old Testament. But, but no, David, you, we clearly see that Jake here is, uh, is telling us that this is what you're saying. You're saying that you, there is no single Christian in history yep, who has ever saying. believed that apostates should be killed. Yep, I'm saying that. That's what I'm saying. No Christian has ever held that apostates should be killed. Uh, yeah. Don't, don't but what's, what's funny? Yeah, apostates. what's funny is he'll clip that, right? <laughs> See, David, David Wood admits, he admits that's what he's saying. AP has been destroyed. What is up with these guys? It's like it's like when we say something like sarcastically to Fareed and then he makes a video responding to us. Yeah.
You got still waiting for you to answer my question. I only have one question. Then he's then he uses this and says he literally says if a Christian were to come out and say the Old Testament punishments applied contrary to everything in the New Testament, hey. Dude, does this mean that David is saying that no Christian has ever held that apostates should be executed? No, it doesn't. What this means is David thinks that such a position is contrary to the New Testament. It can be true. So let me be da Jake. David can say killing apostates is contrary to the New Testament. David can also say there were Christians in the past who, who believed apostates should be executed. He can hold these positions together. Mm -hmm. they are not and, and I can hold the position <laughs> that they, how they are explaining Christianity. You are under the new covenant temporarily. Then it's back to the old covenant. I can say maybe there is a Christian somewhere. I don't. I have never. That's still true. I have never seen that. I've never seen that. So maybe Jake finds someone. You, ha -ha, look, uh, sir, who's it of who cares says in, in the year 682 that once the new covenant is, uh, once you get political power, then you go back to, fine. I've never seen that before. I repeat And it question. sounds absolutely insane and idiotic to say that's the position of Christianity. Like, that's how you interpret Christianity. I repeated my question, said, is that what David is saying in that clip, yes or no? He said, I already answered. I already did. He clearly did not. I linked the video again and said, I have one question. Does he say in that very clip that uh, no Christian has ever interpreted it that way? He still didn't answer my question. He says, it's not about mere violence. Your question is retarded. It's about the death penalty. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, notice... Uh, Notice the uh, sort of underlying stupidity here, right? You say, okay, uh, the uh, the Pope says no death penalty. He says we've reached a point in history, no death penalty, and he takes this as like a an, an outgrowth of the, the gospel that, uh, yeah, there may have been times when you had to put people to death, and we're not in those times anymore, and so we can actually have our full respect for human life while keeping people safe from crime and so on. They say, no, that's liberalism, influencing Christianity. Now notice, Christians can be influenced by other factors other than the gospel. According to Daniel and Jake, we get influenced all the time by secular liberalism. Okay. Could Christians in the past, let's say Christians in the Roman Empire, have been influenced by other things? No. They're, they're, all, they're all getting it right from the gospel. Guys, so keep in mind, because this is what I've broken down to, uh, to, to Daniel before. For centuries, for centuries, Christians didn't kill anyone, not a single drop of blood. The Roman emperor eventually has a dream or vision saying, I have a uh, dream. conquer by this, conquer by this. And he has a, a, a vision of a cross. It says, conquer by this. And so now Christianity becomes, uh, uh, you get this hybrid with a with Christianity and the Roman Empire, you have this. You have this hybrid now. The Roman Empire already had a Roman Empire kind of way of doing things. Now they start adopting Christianity, and they start applying their same rules to. But now Christianity is the is the position. It wasn't under Constantine. It was he made it a legal religion, but it later becomes the official position. And then they just carry on doing the doing the same thing that the Roman Empire would do. If, if people get in your way, you crush and destroy them. So notice. According to Daniel and Jake, what you got when you had this Christian Roman Empire hybrid, that's true Christianity, free from any sort of outside influence. Like, what are you talking about? There was a Roman Empire that had a Roman Empire way of doing things for centuries. Then they adopt Christianity and they carry on doing things the way the Roman Empire did. You uh, and no, 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 that's what, that's what true. So notice, notice the, notice the underlying assumption. No, those years. Christians who became part of the Roman Empire and the Roman and the Roman leaders started carrying out all these penalties and so on. Um, but now for Christianity, they weren't those Christians weren't influenced by anything. That's exactly what Jesus wanted. But now, now Christians are being influenced by outside uh, outside influences, and they're supposed to go back to the Roman Empire kind of way of doing things. Alhamdulillah. And and they, they because they were completely free from outside influence. It's 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 Alhamdulillah. absolutely Alhamdulillah. insane. Long story short, completely wrong. By the way, uh, Derek from Myth Vision A, Derek, what's up? Uh, said as an atheist, David is correct. Uh, you see, you see, he's he know he's now a Christian. Uh, Derek, <laughs> nice to see you. The atheist, so I, David. 
Yeah, so I I, 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 I I asked him again, and he still didn't respond. And uh, yeah, I said, okay, no answer then, I guess. Uh, I answered several times, you liar, although he clearly didn't give an answer, as you can see. Apparently, he thinks he did give an answer, but he just doesn't know what an answer is. Second Let's grade Sunday says. school education understands that. But they keep going on and saying, oh, but you see, killing the apostates making war against non-believers it's all in your own bible you're just not following it and every last christian in the world knows well that's not how we understand or have ever understood our bible and now you are ex daniel hakikaju and uh <laughs> jake the the metaphysician <laughs> which is also admitted on the patrick that david podcast so it's out in the open now uh, killing people who leave Islam is part of the deal. You okay. get in and on and saying, oh, but you see, killing the apostates, making war against non-believers, it's all in your own Bible. You're just not following it. And every last Christian in the world knows, well, that's not how we understand or have ever understood our Bible. And now you hate making... What, what, saying, what is Robert saying here? Oh, but you see, killing the apostates making war against non-believers it's all in your own bible you're just not following it and every last christian in the second grade sunday school education understands that but they keep going on and saying oh but you see killing the apostates making war against non-believers it's all in your own bible you're just not following it and every last christian in the world knows well, that's not how we understand. Or I've Let's ever... take the full context here into consideration. David, what do you think Robert Spencer is arguing here? Is Robert Spencer saying that, <laughs> is Robert Spencer saying that no Christian in history has ever, ever argued or believed in the idea that apostates should be executed? Um, think that's what he's saying. Uh, I don't know. What's, what's the context? Do you have it? I don't have the context, but clearly it is continuing from yep. a point. <laughs> continuing from a point. Yeah, it's, I and, mean, and this method, uh, I'm, 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 I'm trying to, I'm trying to, <laughs> I'm trying to think because Robert, no, Robert obviously knows that there are Christians who were in favor of death penalties and so on. So uh, I think it's like, I don't know, responding to this idea that, that, Christians actually believe that we are commanded to go out and violently subjugate the world or something like that? Yeah, yeah. And second grade Sunday school education understands that. But they keep going on and saying, oh, but you see, killing the apostates, making war against non-believers, it's all in your own Bible. You're just not following it. And every last Christian in the world knows, well, that's not how we understand really need some context. I really want to understand what exactly Robert Spencer is arguing here. Is he arguing, however, that no Christian has ever uh, believed that apostates should be executed? No. Clearly not. Clearly no. Um, and I, I'm thinking of it in terms of, as, as I was saying, that you're, you're, uh, you're, uh, you're going back to this that the goal of the New Testament is to go back to the Old Testament, um, Old Testament rules. Uh, yeah, I mean, you you have you have had like uh, I'm trying to think where it was. Was it the? I almost was it was it, it for was it in Salem? <laughs> was it in Salem? But uh, they actually uh, they actually e executed a dude for uh, for sleeping with a bunch of animals several centuries ago, and they. The ruling was, oh, look, the this Old Testament law, um, and they actually applied it. So you do have people who would enforce a rule. Um, this idea that it's kind of, let, let me put it this way. You have Christians who, okay, we're under the new covenant and so on. Um, and within that framework, they can end up um, enforcing other kinds of laws as far as what is the state supposed to be imposing. Um, and you have had Christians saying, hey, look, look, we have an empire here and we have to enforce uh, apostasy laws and so on. The idea that they're getting that from this, from, okay, we're under the new covenant and yes, the harshest penalty is excommunication. But you know, now that we have political power, we go back to the old Testament. It's just not, that wasn't anyone's 
reasoning as far as I've seen. Maybe, maybe you can show me someone like that. So to be clear, um, you have had people for the death penalty. You've had people I against the death penalty. How do you decide who's right? It seems like if you're a Christian, you go back to the commands of Jesus. And we say, okay, what were the commands of Jesus? Jesus says, put down your sword. Uh, the rest, you go to the rest of the, the New Testament, you have no, you have authorities, but they're talking, I mean, they're even talking about pagan authorities that are there to punish wrongdoers and so on. So you can you can say, okay, well, wrongdoers would be people who are killing a, you know, I mean, who are who are apostates or something like that. You can see how they would kind of insert that in there. It's just not the position of Jesus, and it's not the position of the of the New Testament that you kill people for leaving Christianity. So where are you getting that from? In other words, where are you getting that from? You're not getting it from Christianity. You could say it. You could say right now, hey, anyone who disagrees with me about anything has to die. You could do that. And if you're a tyrant, even a tyrant in a Christian country could say, you know what? I've decided anyone who disagrees with me about anything has to be killed. If you're if you're saying, hey, that's the view of Christianity, you should be able to break down how you're getting that from Christianity. Um, hey, hey, look at this. I'm I'm trying to look for, <laughs> I'm trying to look for the actual video from which he took this. But uh, I was just scanning the transcripts of the streams for the word apostate, and it says here, it says here, uh, we'll be talking, I'll be talking to apostate prophet on his channel. That's what it says here. The transcripts calls me apostate prophet. That's what you're apparently saying about me. Terrible, terrible, terrible. But let me find this video, man. I, I really want to look for that, for that uh, clip to find the context. I want to fact check everything this guy says, and everything turns out to be some game here. Where is he, that? He, he, he doesn't seem to have much of a concept of looking at anything in context. Yeah. But yeah, you'd have to you'd I'll, have to I'll find keep, the actual video clip. I'll keep that open. I'll get back to it. I'll get back to it in a second. Now, to be clear, if Robert is saying, if Robert is somehow saying no Christian has ever approved of uh, killing apostate, he would be wrong. And what would we say? Would, we would, would, say he, would say he's wrong. The problem is I can't I can't imagine Robert actually saying that because Robert is aware of uh, of history. Yeah. I suppose that do they actually read the chat? No, we never read the chat. I don't. I don't read the chat. I don't read the live chat. Um, hey, if you want us to read the chat, leave AP a super chat. Yeah, one thousand dollars minimum. I will read it. Um, yeah, no. If if that is what Robert Spencer is saying here, that would be that would be wrong in my opinion. But yeah, what, I would. I would. What, what I would. Funny is what's funny is that he posts the original clip in which in which that is not a, not what Robert Spencer is saying at all. If you look at this video, this is not what Robert Sp Robert Spencer is saying at all, out of context. And he gives vi uh, clips of you in which he says that that is what you are saying. You are clearly not saying that. Yeah, and he's heard me here <laughs> acknowledging that I've never said that or thought that. Look, I told him um, that I will expose him as a liar. And I said, all right, no answer then. Thanks, I'll schedule this. He said, I already answered you several times, you liar. And then he said, um, this is my interpretation of David's words. Oh, okay. Words. Well, I interpret Jake's <laughs> words as, hey, Muhammad is a false prophet. Don't believe in him. Uh, Muhammad's a child molesting, <laughs> murdering rapist. That's how I'm interpreting Jake's words, since we can just interpret anything to mean anything we want. Look, this is my interpretation of David's words there, given the entire context of everything I've heard him say in response to this issue throughout hours of video content. And you're a coward that won't have a discussion on this because you know I will roast you. Then you Very, agree? Wait, so yeah, he challenged you to a discussion? Yeah, suddenly he challenges me here for a discussion. Uh, <laughs> but what he's saying here, for those who don't understand the message, all others might, might have gone it already, what he's saying here is, yeah, okay, I can't demonstrate that David is, you know, explicitly saying there that no Christian has ever, uh, you know, um, believed apostates should be executed. But that is my interpretation of what David is saying based on uh, all the videos and all the footage of David Wood that I have seen before. So he, he does post a clip in which you do not say such a thing. What makes it look like you say such a thing? So he takes mm -hmm. it out of context. And when I confront him on that, he says, "Well, that's my interpretation because of, you know, 
all the other footage that I watched from him. Is isn't this isn't this a clear way of admitting that he lied, but he justifies it because he just interprets it in a different way? Well, yeah. So obviously we can interpret anything however we want. So I'm interpreting, I'm interpreting Jake's words as please, please crumble up a page of the Quran, because we can just interpret anything any way we want. Jake, why do you want me doing this, man? Why you want me doing this to your book? Why? Please tell me. Why did you? Why did you beg me to do this? Why? Man, 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 man. The next time you talk, I'll look for the context here. I'm real curious now. All right. He said, "Sure, a complete joke." I said, "Is this a prank?" I'm the one inviting you to an online discussion and debate from the very beginning. Uh, <laughs> And then after this, of course, after that, he suddenly was all about, okay, let's debate, let's discuss, let's debate. And then I agree, he made his conditions. This, this reminds me of, this brings back memories of Muhammad Dijab. Then he, so he, he first says, you're a coward, you're scared, you will never debate me. And I'm like, okay, yeah, let's, let's debate. I challenge you to a debate. And he's like, no. And I say, you challenge me and I challenge you too. And I agree. He's like, okay, here are my conditions. And I say, okay, I agree to all of your conditions. And then he's like, no, no you didn't agree to my implied conditions. Like, <laughs> I now back out. We will not have a debate. You are a coward. It was basically Muhammad Hijab. Same thing here almost. These guys, man. What a joke. What a joke. <laughs> This is Dawa, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Yeah, this is it. He backed out. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Yeah, so then uh, after... And, and by the way, this is... This is part of the reason where I was like, do your discussion with AP first. Do your debate with AP first. And then we'll do your debate. Cut... Because I, I'm not interested in this. You know what I mean? This sort of back and forth arguing where, okay, we're going to have a debate, but now there's this long drama filled back and forth uh, with conditions and this and that going on for days. It's like, no, you, you want to debate? Fine. Not interested in the drama. And you know who this, you know who he really reminds me of? He reminds me of Nadir Ahmed, where wow. Nadir would always say, Nadir's goal, his goal of all of this was to get you to eventually say, no, I'm not interested. And then he would say, you're running, right? So Nadir would agree to a debate, but he would use the debate to challenge you to more debates. And then if you're eventually, you eventually get to the, every single debate, it's a, uh, okay, now I challenge you to this one. And I challenge you to this one. I challenge you. He's doing this in the debates, right? Uh, so you you show up to the debate, and then he starts challenging you to more debates, and eventually you say, "Dude, I'm not interested. You have you're not you're not that important. I'm not interested in debating 57 topics with you." And he goes, and then he goes, "You see, everyone is running from me." So it seems like the Jake's goal is, "Hey, I'm just gonna go back and forth with you forever." Until you say, dude, this is old. I'm not interested. And then he can run and say, oh, you see, they're running. They're cowards. They're scared of me. Again, I have agreed to four debates with this guy. He is back down every single time. AP agreed with it, scheduled it, set it up. Jake back down. Somehow we're cowards and he's the uh, he's the hero. Yeah. Welcome to yeah. Dawa, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Dawa. Welcome to Dar Darwa. Cedric made a super sticker. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Cybotic said AP wins by default. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, that's their logic. Their logic yeah. is that if you don't show up, if you forfeit. don't you reject it's forfeit. Them. That's a forfeit. I won't. So, so sorry, Islam is false. Islam has been debunked. A atheism has been proven true yeah. until, until uh, AP is refuted by a Christian, but Muslims have backed down. You see, now he, he will clip this and say, you see, the Christian even agrees with atheism now. What kind of Christians are these people? <laughs> oh, man, man, man. David, uh, when are you going to cut your hair? When are you going to cut your hair, David? My wife wants to see me with longer hair. She thinks I'm going to look like a Viking warrior or something like that. I think I'm going to look like an idiot. <laughs> I think I'm going to look like an idiot. I'm pretty sure I'm going to look like an idiot. But you're just, you're just lying. You're just we've been married for 21 years now. And if she wants to see me with long hair, she's going to see me with long hair. I'm hoping that once it's grown out, she's going to say, you're right. You look like an idiot. Cut it off. But if she says, if she says, nope, I really like it. I'm going to, I'm going to keep it. I'm going to keep it. I'm going to do whatever my wife wants. 
You see, David is weak. He's controlled by his woman. No, my wife has put up with everything you could think of all these years, death threats, rape threats, all this stuff. That woman wants to see long hair. That woman's going to see long hair. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, King of Corinth said, TikTok time to rock. The wrong channel, man. We don't do that here. Yeah, we don't do that over here. <laughs> Joshua TXI said, I love your streams and the Dizzle, two of my favorite. No, it actually says, uh, oh, I, I thought it was, it was a dog. Two of my favorite YouTubers. But he mentions two after mentioning Dizzle, which means that you are um, only second. Like, I am the favorite. Uh, Chloe said, AP is a true Christian. I know that. I'm a secret Christian, not a true Christian. Uh, Samuel Tohi, thank you. So, thank you. Though, said, Jake the Fake has always been Jake a coward. Jake the Fake, that's a good name. He has spent majority of his time in clubhouse dawa rooms, kicking people out who do not fuel his narrative. Yeah, I saw him debate with some random people in those uh, on those apps. It's it's just weird that you know what I, I mentioned. I I offered him a debate a long time ago about is Islam true or not, and he actually rejected by saying that uh, he focuses on the existence of God. And doesn't want to debate on, you know, Islam specifically, but then he went on to have d d debates about Islam. This guy is just—I don't know. Pan Zimniak said, "Love you guys, but might consider a break from you. I feel that my brain cells are dying from listening to the tower guys. I admire your patience. Don't take a break. Don't take a break." By the way, isn't it? I mean, as far as debates go, I mean, seriously, if they really thought. That Muhammad's a true prophet and the Quran is obviously the word of Allah. It seems like they'd be willing to take those debates and they won't touch them. They won't touch them. They want they want to debate theology or something like that, but they don't want to, they don't want to go near was Muhammad a prophet or is the Quran the word of Allah? And I'm interested the main reason I'm interested in those debates now, because I've always been interested in those debates. The main reason now is they've acknowledged that so many of their arguments were just absolute nonsense. They've acknowledged that they, that their arguments were were complete lies and wait you say minute, what wait, 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 wait. i i don't even know what you're arguing like what would you what if if your perfect preservation argument was a lie and your scientific miracles argument that was a lie and the number 19 that was a lie if all these arguments were lies i don't even know what you argue at this point like i want to see it i want to see how can you possibly defend your prophet and your book when you've acknowledged that all of your arguments that you've been using for the past 30 years were all lies i want to see it and they won't go near it it's like oh, because yeah. now Remember what Ali Dawa remember what Ali Dawa is saying? Um, yeah, uh, it looks like Ali Dawa is saying, yeah, we're giving up on arguments. We're just going to say uh, our intolerance is the big draw now. So, yeah, let's just go around talking about killing apostates all day and beating women into submission. And uh, that's uh, that's the new big, big draw for Islam. Yeah. But uh, that's not going to work well in a debate. Right? Like, like if you say, hey, why is Muhammad a prophet? He's, because he's so intolerant. He's going to kill everybody. It's like, are you seriously going to defend that? Yeah, Bob Owen said Jake should give it back to the polytheists. He definitely should. David, I just found the video. I just found the context here. Okay, and <laughs> I just glossed over the trans uh, the transcript here, and he doesn't get it. <laughs> I think. Wait a minute. I'm playing this without knowing. I don't know. I, I don't. I don't. Say, I don't okay? know either. If Robert, if Robert is saying no, <laughs> no Christian has ever said that he would he would be wrong. But it would be weird <laughs> to think that Robert is saying that. Let's see. Apostates and all this. And what's wild, it, Wait. it's been an exhilarating couple weeks with all this coming out and, you know, in the open admission. Yeah, we want to kill the apostates and all this. And what's wild about it is that I realized these guys are believing the nonsense that's actually in their own tradition. Because, you know, I'm working on, as you know, I'm working on a, 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 a new book, Muhammad, a critical biography going through the uh, Sira literature again, comparing the different versions of the story, showing how none of this has any historical basis. And in the stories, of course, we have uh, several incidents where, it, particularly when it comes to stoning adulterers, there are the famous stories of the Jews, the rabbis <clears throat> holding their hand over the scripture and Muhammad says, "Read what it says. Now move your hand." And uh, he come. He he makes them admit. So pay attention. He's specifically talking here about the Islamic idea, uh, which are presented, uh, which is presented in the Quran, 
according to which Jews clearly have their rules, but they are hiding it. They are putting their hands on it and, you know, to not follow it. But Muhammad then says, no, show what it says. And then they reveal that there is a death penalty. This is a story in Islam. That and, and by the way, uh, I, I don't remember if we talked about this here, but we have, uh, I think I've talked about this with Robert, that um, Jews of that time did not even... I mean, maybe maybe there was a weird group there, but there was a reason Jews didn't enforce those those penalties, right? They believe that everything is connected to the temple worship and having a priest and so on, and being able to consult the Urim and the Thummim and so on to uh, to judge these disputes and so on. And once the whole system breaks down, it, it's similar to what Muslims say when they're living in a non-Islamic country. They say, hey, we have to live by the rules here. We, we can't be going around enforcing uh, Sharia and so on here. But to a bigger extent, they believe that like the entire uh, the entire temple sacrificial system and all this, it, it, it all broke down. And so they came up with other kinds of penalties for various things. And Muhammad says, no, that was the rule 14 centuries ago. And therefore, that's what you have to go with now. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, and so he makes them enforce a penalty that they did not believe they, they had the authority or the obligation to carry out anymore. Yeah. And Peter says, kill the adulterers and that they're not obeying what God told them to do. And the Muslims are. And, you know. It reminds me of all this business that's going on nowadays with what you mentioned there in, in passing. Oh, but in the Old Testament, it says this. They, these guys clearly have, don't have the first foggiest notion of the role of the Old Testament in Christianity. And so they think, oh, my goodness, these guys are just like the rabbis. And they're holding their hand over the scriptures. And we're telling them to move it and telling, showing them what's in their own books. And we have one. And they don't realize that Christianity doesn't work that way, has never worked that way. This has nothing to do with liberalism. It has to do with how Christianity was constituted from the beginning. And every Christian with a second grade Sunday school education understands it. But they keep going on and saying, oh, but you see, killing the apostates, making war against non-believers it's all in your own bible you're just not following it so th there yeah so in context wait, wait, hold on hold on, hold on. let, let him finish the world knows well that's not how we understand or i've ever understood our bible and now you are exposing to the world so okay go and make a point <laughs> in con in context that is what he was saying that that their insane yes. view where um somehow like it, it makes no it may, I mean, if you just read the, this, his argument will only appeal to people who are, uh, Jake's argument, Daniel's argument would only appeal to people who are so incredibly ignorant. They don't understand the concept of different covenants for different groups over time. <clears throat> They're, the, the, in the Bible, you have a series of covenants. And I'll give a very simple example. You got a covenant with Noah. Noah was told you can eat anything. There are no food restrictions. Then you had the covenant with the children of Israel. They had all kinds of food restrictions. Then you get to the New Testament. We're told you don't have food restrictions and so on. Um, you have Muslims who don't understand this basic distinction. They'll say, look, it says, it says right here in Leviticus, you are under this food restriction. It's like, what, what, what in the name of common sense are you talking about? That's not directed towards me. It says over and over and over again, this is for the children of Israel. This is for the children of Israel. This is for the children of Israel. In the New Testament, you got the book of Acts, chapter 15, where they specifically address what of the old covenant are the new believers, these Gentile Christians, what are they under here? What, How much of this Old Testament, this old law, are they actually under? And there were a couple of food restrictions. There were a couple of restrictions about food and immorality, which seemed to be just have no purpose other than not blocking fellowship between the Jewish and the Gentile believers in Jesus. Like, hey guys, you can't you can't be uh, uh, you can't be doing this because then you're not going to be able to get along with uh, with the with the other guys. Uh, but it, so notice it's I, I a, a Christian who's saying, hey, this command in Leviticus or something like that is something that I'm under because it's in the Bible. It's in the Bible, therefore it's directed towards me. It's absolutely insane. I mean, cross the Jordan River and fight the Canaanites. That's not commanded towards me. What are you talking about? I've, it, you, would, you would sound like an idiot if I read it and, oh, it's in the Bible. It says, cross the Jordan River, fight the Canaanites. Okay, well, I guess I guess I better pack my bags and, uh, and go go uh, go sign up with the uh, Israeli Defense Forces and go 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 fight people there. It doesn't make any sense at all. 
Jake, 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 Jake. I want to I want to make it just very, very simple, right? I want to make it very simple. Jake, you idiot. Jake, you liar. You liar. Dumbass. You push out you, you you put these videos out and you make it look like uh Robert Spencer is saying that Chris, that Christians or no Christian has ever believed that apostate should be executed. No Christian has ever interpreted these uh, Bible verses uh, in, in a in a violent, you know, or 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 you know, punitive way. What Robert Spencer is clearly saying here, as you can understand when you watch the video, is you are arguing that Christians should look at their scripture. If they open their scripture, they see that it says uh, in the Old Testament. If people uh, say to you, let's go and worship other gods, then put them to, de to death. So that means this is a law that applies to all Christians because it is in their scripture. Uh, but if they don't follow it, that means they are just not following their own scripture. And he's and saying that that is stupid because Christians never thought that way. Even if Christians justify, or even if Christians argued that apostates should be executed, Christians never believed that uh, that the entirety of the scripture, the Old Testament and the New Testament, is word for word law for all Christians, which is the entire idea of uh, Jesus coming and um, fulfilling the covenant, and then a new covenant for Christians coming into existence. The entire idea, you should understand this, is the separation of these covenants. One covenant for the older community, one covenant for the future. Now, it's one covenant for the Jews, one covenant after Jesus for the Christians. But according to you, if something is in the Bible, Old Testament or New Testament, it applies to everyone and it's a law. And if you don't do it, then that means then that means you're hiding your own scripture. And you are, you are an idiot. What's absolute again, the most, I mean, what's insane here is Islam has the doctrine of abrogation where Muhammad could walk up to his followers, say one thing, come up to them a week later, say something completely different. And they would just say, okay, this new thing is better. And we're going with the, the new command. It's like, wait a minute. I mean, that old command is just as much part of the eternal word, the eternal speech of Allah as this new command. And yet you're saying, uh, that this is that this is better. Imagine if we applied the same reasoning to them. Nope, you got to go with the you got to go with the older one as soon as it becomes uh, you know uh, as soon as you want to, as soon as you want to, as soon as you get power or something like that. Then you have to go with the with the older one. So you've got that, but you also have this idea that even according to even according to Islam, Jesus came to make changes in the law, and yet you're telling us no, 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 ignore the changes uh, uh, of Jesus and go back. I, I don't even know what to do. It's like so insanely stupid and is geared towards insanely stupid people. It's like the Dawa guys understand our entire community is filled with morons, and we can say whatever we want in order to keep them confident in their religion. And okay, it's, all uh, it's all justified because Allah loves to said, All the Paul said, the Bible doesn't teach that there is one covenant for Jews and another for Christians. That doctrine doesn't exist. AP, sorry. Uh, I know. Uh, what, what, I'm, what? what I'm trying to explain, what I'm trying to explain is that the Old Testament... Wait, what? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. The, the Bible doesn't teach that there's multiple covenants. No, I, I think I think is that uh, what he's saying? I think what was mis what was uh, I think I I don't know from what I said it may have sounded like I'm saying that according to the Bible people can still follow these different uh, covenants. You know, Jews can have their own covenant and uh, Christians have their own covenant, and that they're, that both of them are uh, acceptable or something like that. What I, I was I, go, I, go ahead. I, I, I don't even know what this guy is saying. If he's denying <laughs> that there are multiple covenants, I have no idea what he's talking <clears> about. Right. You obviously I, have you indisputable. What guys, uh, what does the word testament mean? I, I think I misspoke what, wait, a little bit. That's, what does that's the, why. no? I'm saying, what is this guy saying? Is he saying there's not more than one covenant? Like, no, do, I, no, I, I think that's not what he's arguing. I think what he's arguing, I think what he's saying is that I made it look like uh, that Jews and Christians today have uh, different covenants, which they, uh, you know, which are both acceptable and something like that. I don't, I don't know. I, I think that is what is happening here. There is a misunderstanding, but clearly we all think that. Yeah, I mean, the I word to Christianity, there is an old covenant and a new covenant. The word testament means covenant. Yeah. <laughs> old covenant, new covenant. Jesus said, this is my blood of the new covenant. So I hope that's not what Al DePal is saying. But if, yeah, you're, yeah. if you're saying they're not, <laughs> and you're even, you're even told in the Old Testament that a new covenant was coming. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Uh
that's i think this is just a misunderstanding here but yeah um yeah, yeah. quite confusing everyone ap old covenant new covenant i thought that was clear i don't know by 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 the way by the way ap yes i just have to say yes something that's interesting to me in all of this guys have you noticed that ap an atheist is way 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 more concerned with representing even teachings that he doesn't believe in he wants to represent them accurately and you compare this with the the, the heroes of dawa and they are the biggest liars on the planet like everything with them is misrepresenting the other person misrepresenting their beliefs misrepresenting their scriptures misrepresenting everything isn't it isn't it interesting that like these guys will condemn ap you have you have no basis for morality and yet they behave <laughs> yet he's the one who is focused on telling the truth and they're they believe that it's good to lie i mean it's just interesting i don't know it's interesting to me but don't you see what that actually means that means i'm a secret christian you see <laughs> that's why you tell the truth it means you're a secret christian <laughs> yeah all right all right uh i wanted to make this very short but then david came of course and turned this into a two-hour live stream again uh <clears throat> joshua gonzalez said how dare you joke about the repurposing the repurposed pagan shrine the unbridled hubris <laughs> that's exactly the point he doesn't get it he thinks i really think i should, should be conquered alpha wall thank you so much for the super chat derek nelson said this guy Indeed, indeed, that's what I always say. Me, Green said, I know this is completely off topic, but David, I saw the video with your cousin's epic rivalry with the wiener. You can't make that stuff up. Absolutely hilarious. Yeah, that was hilarious. That's that was my cousin. That was my cousin Eric. Yeah, when Anthony yeah. Wiener uh, tried to punk him out, yeah, yeah. and uh, and then yeah. left his ex-wife's credit card there, and now my cousin has his ex-wife's credit card. And and the wiener was right there. Ordinary person made a super chat. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Beatrice said, uh, the disciple said nothing about killing who wanted to leave. If my kingdom was from this world, I would fight. It's not about bringing paradise to earth by our hands through some kind of utopia. Yeah. So notice uh, <laughs> uh, Beatrice here combined a couple of teachings, but uh, um, no, so you had humanism. You, you had the uh, you had the command put down your weapons. Those who live by the sword will die by the sword. But uh, she also mentioned uh, what what Jesus said to Pilate when Jesus said, "If my kingdom were of this world, then my followers would be fighting, right? But my kingdom is not of this world." So he specifically had Jesus is not fighting for an earthly uh, kingdom or empire, and yet, according to Daniel and Jake, that is exactly what Jesus was fighting for, and he wants us to go out and fight and subjugate the world and kill apostates. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Tenzel Muslimud said, Farid, uh, Farid said, Bukhari 5652 debunks Muhammad's epilepsy. What are your thoughts, AP? Also, David is too funny. Uh, are you referring to the hadith that says uh, that somebody was suffering from epilepsy, which wasn't even a word? Yeah, it says, uh, it says uh, uh, the superiority of a person who is suffering from epilepsy. Uh, narrated blah 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 ibn abbas said blah 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 uh ibn abbas said to me shall i show you a woman of the people of paradise i said yes he said this black lady came to the prophet and said i get attacks of epilepsy and my body becomes uncovered so i guess she falls over and her you know her her body becomes uncovered please invoke allah for me the prophet said to her if you wish be patient and you will have paradise allah, and if you wish i will invoke allah to cure you she said i will <clears> remain <throat> patient and added but i become uncovered so please invoke allah for me that i might not become uncovered so he invoked allah for her narrated ada that he had seen um zufar the tall black lady holding the curtain of the kaaba alhamdulillah beautiful no idea how that refutes uh, or debunks muhammad's epilepsy we'd have to see what farid does with that maybe we'll do a live stream on uh on that uh, what i'm gathering from this is uh what is being implied here or what farid uh is trying to say here is that since muhammad is talking about another woman who has epilepsy it can't be true that he himself had epilepsy well that's because... that's that's ridiculous that's like <laughs> that's like oh if i have uh uh if i have uh if i have herpes i can't talk about someone else having herpes like, wait, okay, but I, I think I think the idea is that um, Muhammad. Had, so 
people say that Muhammad had epilepsy, but uh, people mistook it for revelation. But that cannot be true because Muhammad already experienced other people who had epilepsy. And yeah, but if you if you look at what she's describing, it sounds exactly like what Muhammad receiving as revelations, right? Like fall over on the ground and so on. I'm not I'm not saying that is the correct view. Yeah, I'm just yeah, saying yeah. if you look at his descriptions of him receiving his revelations, it sounds like it does sound like epilepsy. Yeah, and yeah. that's what that's the basis of people making the claim. Is that the case? I don't know, but there are it sounds pretty much like this woman. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. yeah, uh, I gotta look into that further. I need to see the video to speak about it. I haven't watched Farid, I haven't watched Farid videos in a long because, time. as you can see right here, it says this woman had epilepsy. <laughs> How can two people have the same thing? It's impossible. <laughs> so, there's no way that Muhammad had epilepsy because Allah revealed that only one person in any region of the world can have one thing, it is a metaphysical matter. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> Robert, thank you, man. Alpha Wolf said Ares was not executed, Nestorius was not executed, and all the other arch heretics. There is no such law in early Christianity. That's what you're saying. But uh, now Jake will take this clip of me reading this and will clip it and say, Look here, AP is clearly saying what I said he's saying. We'll just all get a, become a mess. I don't know. <laughs> uh, Cedric said, honesty and tr truth. I have never heard of a single Dawa guy who held this position. The position of honesty and truth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Rachel Zegovic said, I got five. I got five on it. Car I got five on it. <laughs> yeah. You know about that. But why is that uh, Carpet Honest Dawa Fund for AP? Oh, okay, five because of $5. I'm not, I'm not even getting the context here. My brain is mush. But thank you. I appreciate that. Robert rules, Dawa drools. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Rachel. I appreciate that. Stephen Young said, well, I'm ruining the joke here, man. Stephen Young said, what is your opinion of the Catholic teaching that Muslims and Christians worship the same creator God? I struggle with this idea as a Catholic. Yeah, I, I always just say it depends on what you mean. Like if you're saying, hey, we both believe in a creator who sends uh, prophets into the world or something like that. Okay, then we we do share that belief. Um, if you get down to it, see, here's the thing. If you get down to it, it's like, okay, we, you know, we believe in a, a triune God who became incarnate as Jesus of Nazareth and so on. That's definitely not what Muslims believe. Um, so yeah, normally if the issue is coming up, I just say, clarify exactly what you mean and what level of Concord you're talking about. If you're talking about really generic, we believe in one creator or something like that. Okay. We believe in the, the same thing. But, uh, if, uh, if you actually start laying out details of, of the deity, then yeah, plenty of, uh, plenty of disagreements there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I usually, um, so when it, when it comes to the technicalities of the belief in uh, the same God, um, I gave the answer before where I said that um, that Muslims do believe, you know, in the same same God, or they do at least um, believe that they do that they believe in the same God, or they believe they follow the same God. So the the idea is pretty much the same God. But when I say that there that the God of uh, Islam and the God of Christianity is different, uh, what I argue is usually that that they get much of the information about that God very wrong, such as even something as basic as the name, and that their source about that God is completely disconnected from the biblical history, and that the claim of worshiping the same God is, you know. A little bit wild, but yeah, of course. Um, technically, you could argue that Muslims um, do aim to believe in the same God, and I believe that is also the, the Catholic position, which is that they, uh, in one way or another, that they um, aspire to worship the same God. Jeff Kirby said, "I think we have to start talking to these uh, guys at a level their wives are at. Two plus two, a good age for a wife." <laughs> Um, yeah, uh, AP, you know, you know, it's crazy, AP. <laughs> I don't like going after people's families and stuff, but one of our one of our live streams from the other day, uh, 
Daniel said something about uh, how's it feel? Said to Jordan Peterson, how's it feel being a prostitute or something like that? <laughs> and you blurted out. He's talking about his wife. And I said, hey, 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 let's 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 not let's not go the direction of the wives and stuff. But someone in the comments section said I was shocked that AP uh, said that about Daniel's wife. That's no way to talk about a four year old. <laughs> 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 so, like, gosh, man! People, <laughs> like, gosh, people are messed up, man. <laughs> oh boy! Oh boy! Uh, yeah, wild, wild stuff. Uh, <laughs> uh, David, is your mug bottomless? Uh, no, it's all gone. Which is normally when it's time to uh, to break up a show. Where's the jihad tears? <sighs> Got this one right here. I need a big giant one that says jihad jihad tears because uh, this just became. If I'm drinking water, I can sip on this, but uh, if I'm drinking a big cup of coffee, it's too small. Alhamdulillah. Uh, <laughs> man, that was unexpected. Angel Ferreira said, uh, in an act of solidarity and bridge building, a Jewish lady I know is holding a cookout for Dawa fellas. Main dish will be goat meat. <laughs> By the way, you, you know, this is a, uh, you know, this is obviously a joke, but think about the level of stupidity of Muhammad here. Imagine, imagine, because Guys, in the in the stories about Muhammad, what actually led to his death, he was poisoned by a Jewish woman whose family had been slaughtered and then offered to cook for Muhammad and his companions, and he accepted the offer. This would be like a woman coming forward today. Imagine a, a Jewish woman in Israel saying, hey, Hamas just killed my father, my husband, my brother, my family, Hamas just killed all these guys. Now, uh, everyone, I'd like to invite Hamas to dinner. I'm cooking a delicious meal. And imagine Hamas actually showing up going, Duh, wow, that's very nice of this woman whose family we just slaughtered uh, to make us dinner. Like the level of stupidity. No, the point, the point is Hamas. There is not a Hamas jihadi on the planet who is that stupid, stupid enough to fall for it. And yet Muhammad, the prophet of Islam, tactical genius, accepted the offer of a, of a woman to cook for him, even after he just slaughtered her entire family. And you can see throughout uh, history and even today, people who are there for, I think even some prominent traditionalist uh, Islamic sites, say that uh that, that that muslims should take revenge for them collectively attempting to kill and probably king killing the prophet muhammad who was stupid enough to fall for something like that uh, um king of Corinth said are these liars aware that jesus is the moral standard for christianity like the pedophile prophet is for islam jesus's great message was love I would never. This is very insulting, very Islamophobic. Please uh, abstain from Islamophobia on this. No, show. Jesus' greatest message was slaughter everyone in the name of Allah. Yeah, this is clearly a very secular, humanist, uh, atheist, liberal, modern perspective. Uh, when Jesus said, "Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you," no, it's secular humanism. He meant temporarily. He meant <laughs> until we get the political power to slaughter them. <laughs> Johnny Silverball said, AP sheep's milk or camel's milk. Answer very carefully. I'm doing an experiment. <laughs> that's to figure out if you're a Jew or not. <laughs> <laughs> that's that that's that hadith where Muhammad said, uh, Muhammad actually perform he invites his followers to perform a scientific experiment on how he concludes that uh, Allah transformed Jews into rats. He said the rats won't eat. Uh, won't drink camel's milk, but they'll eat sheep's milk, and therefore they're following Jewish dietary restrictions. And so these are actually rats uh, that that were once Jews and have been. So they 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 kept kosher. The rats kept kosher after Allah transformed Jews into rats. Yes, this is uh this is all from Muhammad. This was actually the first scientific research in history. You see how could Muhammad? How could Muhammad have advocated performing scientific experiments? This led to the scientific revolution. Yeah, Muhammad is actually the father of modern science. Father of modern science. We should actually make a video like that, going through justice and Muhammad, <laughs> father of modern science. Uh, Jeff Dribbler said, uh, I think Jake said he's got his own hadith of David. What? I don't know. 
but thank you. Desert Empire said, you see? Uh, thank you. <laughs> King of Court said, Jake is a hero. He's brave at running away. Uh, strap on pleasure machine. Brave made Jake, Jake run here. away. Bravely uh, ran away, away. David, what's your perspective on the Al Mahdi as a Christian? You guys are phenomenal. Keep up the good work. David, one word. What is your perspective on the Mahdi? God bless, said he. Uh, no idea. Never the studied word. that topic. Those two words. As a Christian. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, I did study it. Uh, and what's very funny is that Sunni Muslims believe that there is a, a Mahdi, a, a savior, a helper that who's going to come at the end times. But Sunni sources are actually very vague on that. And the Mahdi appears only a few times in very questionable hadiths. And Muslims are Sunni Muslims are actually quite strange in believing that it is primarily a Shia belief, but it has very become very uh, prominent among Sunni Muslims as well. I made a video on that. I call it the Muslim superhero or something like that. Uh, Issa Kabir said, looking forward to seeing you, Brother Wood. Oh, I'm debating him. Hey, Issa. Yeah, we're debating. Uh, we're debating in uh, November fourth or whatever in Texas. So yes, hey Isa, just so you know, I I adjust, I adjust, uh, <laughs> I adjust my rhetoric to the people uh, I'm debating. So I have no reason to, I have no reason to not have complete respect for you. So yeah, I'll I'll, I'll be approaching you differently than the way I <coughs> address uh, Jake. Oh, this is funny. Uh, I'm looking at the news on the side. Arrests made at New York City pr uh, protest against genocide of Palestinians in Gaza. Hundreds of people blocked uh, streets and protested to end the genocide in Palestine. And uh, lots of people were arrested. Uh, Israeli operation is now underway. Israeli gr uh, ground operation is now underway. Um, and so on. Uh, <clears throat> I'm just, I'm just rereading this, uh, tweet from Norm McDonald. So Norm, uh, Norm, uh, uh died, but <laughs> it's, it's 2016. And he says, what terrifies me is if ISIS were to detonate a nuclear device and kill 50 million Americans, imagine the backlash against peaceful Muslims. <laughs> like, that was, notice, I mean, he's someone who doesn't deal with this issue, but we see this all the time. Like there'd be a terrorist attack and then the next day and, and authorities are concerned about the backlash against Muslims, which, which never came. Um, but every time we are warned, Hey, you know, you just, they just killed a bunch of people. So make sure, make sure that uh, we're all focused on not having a backlash here. He didn't uh, comment uh, much of, on the stuff and right, but that th that tweet is just the only thing that I've seen from him. Yeah, about this, it's interesting. All right, all right. What else is there? Uh, where is Jake? He left Christianity. We must send him to Jesus ASAP. You can't leave the religion of Christianity and spread another. Yes, we have to kill him. That's what's and that's the funniest part, right? Like if these guys thought that Christians were going to take them seriously and say, "Oh, Jake, Jake, and Daniel said we're supposed to kill apostates too." I guess we'll just go out and have to start killing apostates because Jake and Daniel they pointed out that you did you got this thing in the Old Testament, right? Uh, if they actually thought that Christians were going to take them seriously, they would keep their mouths shut. So notice the underlying assumption in everything they do is no one, no, no Christians going to take anything we're saying seriously, but our followers, followers are stupid enough to take this seriously. And therefore we can keep saying it and never be in any sort of actual danger. Alhamdulillah. 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 Uh, Aladdin said AP as a Palestinian challenged you today in your live stream about what happened in Gaza, but you run away. And I challenge you stupidity now again here in this stupid David Wood stream. Do you have the guts to accept? Who in the uh, world is this? Aline, I don't know what uh, you want from me, but um, I never made the stream to have. Do you have the guts to accept? Either. Unlike our dice, do you have the guts to accept? Uh, yeah, Aladdin, we have no clue who you are, and we don't care. Um, I, I don't want to. Um, I don't want to attack somebody here who is uh, possibly 
in one way or another with his uh i don't know relatives or maybe himself affected by the the war no matter what side i agree with but uh i don't know if you think i'm wrong about something feel free to come thing says he's a dawa guy so the dawa guys generally think of all palestinians as pawns like hamas it's all part of their it's all mm -hmm. part of a campaign Mamataya said, why should you disobey the command and holy words of Allah? Say you are sorry and make sure to repent. Remember, never underestimate the forgiveness of Allah. Mamet, I need, I need to tell you something. Um, it might be very hard for you to understand. And I get it. It was very hard for me to understand when I was a Muslim. But when I, as somebody who doesn't believe in Islam, do not heed the Islamic commands, that's not because I clearly know that Allah is the true God and that, that Islam is true and I choose to disobey it. It is because I don't believe that it is true. I think it is fake. I think it is nonsensical. So I'm not disobeying. I don't believe that the, that, that, that the command exists. Hope and... And uh, notice, never underestimate the forgiveness of Allah. <laughs> what, uh, what did Muhammad say about the forgiveness of Allah? Uh, that, uh, that on the day of judgment, Allah is going to take, going to hand over to every Muslim, a Jew or a Christian, and say, this is your ransom for the hellfire. And then Allah is going to take the sins of Muslims. Even if your sins are as heavy as a mountain, Muhammad said, Allah is going to take the sins off of you and put those on the backs of the Jews or the Christians, and the Jews and the Christians are going to be punished for your sins in hell. That's Allah's, that's Allah's forgiveness, according to Muhammad. Uh, Ninja Turtle said, AP is a god. I'm not sure what has gotten into you. I think this must be a case of insanity. Ninja Turtle, please. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, Ugana Okoli said, oh, but you see in David's mimicking voice. This has become a tra trademark thing. See? Uh, that one gamer said, you just wanted to say thank you to both of you for the work you do. God bless you both, even the non-believers. Well, how dare you say God bless you to me? Uh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, Anthony Lefleur said, hey, David, who has the better bookshelf, you or Robert Spencer? Oh, me. Because I built mine. And it's me. With my son. <clears throat> with your son? Wow. Nice. Mine's custom. Wall to wall. This isn't this isn't IKEA stuff here. This is this is a 12 foot two by ten lumber transformed into beautiful shelves. Alhamdulillah. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Let's just give people Whoa. see that? Look at that. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, Robert can't mess with this. Ooh. My bookshelf is the best. Look at my bookshelf. Look at this. See, you see. Notice, notice. The atheists never have books. <laughs> they don't read. Um. Da, 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 da. Why, David Goliath said, why was a Christian country not created in the Palestine region in World War II. After all, Christians have as much of a claim as Jews. Uh, you mean World War? Uh, so, <clears throat> I guess I guess the idea was, hey, you should have a Jewish territory and a Muslim territory and a Christian territory. I, I have no idea why that wasn't uh, the, the, that the wasn't League thing. of Nations and the United Kingdom at that time were all about uh, finding a solution for the populations of the world. Uh, it was established as a mandate, and a mandate by League of Nations standards was um, a, a land, a territory that is taken. Uh, from an imperialist uh, state for an imperialist nation and under the guidance of the League of Nations uh, turned into an actual nation um, with respecting the needs of the local population and this and that for specifically for that region um, the, the Zionist movement made an agreement with the with the with with the UK to establish due to the already available local Jewish population to uh, establish a Jewish state um, 
and also to have Jews who don't feel very secure and to experience mm -hmm. struggles in Europe to go there and live there peacefully. Of course, they had this um I don't know what I don't know what to call it, but they had this very naive or very stupid idea that they could actually, and that was the plan, actually build a state uh, that is a Jewish state in which the Jews and the Arabs peacefully live to, live together and coexist. Uh, then they 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 realized very quickly that that was a very unrealistic, a very wrong idea. So. Yeah, it wasn't based on religion. This whole this yeah. Thing. So and yeah, and the idea is th that that was yeah establishing a Christian country or something like that was not even a goal. There were tons of countries where Christians were completely safe as Christians. The idea was Jews need a place that they Jews needed a place where they are not dependent on someone else for protection because notice the claim is, what are you talking about? You got Jews all over the place and they're safe. No, it looks like uh, anyone at any given point can just start rounding them up and putting in, putting them in trains and the, and the entire world's gonna take a long time before they actually do anything about it. Uh, so the, the, the idea was um, it needs to be a priority that Jews have a place where they are not dependent on other people for their safety. But, but, but uh, imagine how delusional these guys were back then. They were like, hey, we, let's let's take this region and let's build a wonderful nation there where Jews can finally have their own, uh, you know, safe nation and where they can thrive and prosper together with the local Arab population, together with the local Muslim population. Uh, yeah. and, the, and I'm sure the, the leader, the leader of which was meeting with Hitler on how to exterminate <laughs> the Jews. <laughs> well, people, people have very wild imaginations. Uh, Nish said, buy yourself some drinks and chips. Cheers. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, Sid Dave said, the dedication Muslims have to Mo is pretty much the same Nazis had for Hitler. The Shahada is like Heil Hitler, where they swear undying loyalty to Mo. Actually, Carl Jung is, um, made this very comparison in the time of Hitler, uh, he, where he wrote about this. And he said, he described the situation in Nazi Germany like the way he described uh, the early Muslim followers of Muhammad. He compared Muhammad to Hitler and said that uh, in Germany right now, with the rise of Hitler, there is an, a, a warlike um, energy, um, just the way that Muslims were rallying behind behind uh, Mohammed. So yeah, this is actually Carl, Carl Jung, such a such a respectable person in psychology and other philosophy is the one who actually made that comparison. I have a video on that. I have a video on that, which I think called why Carl Jung compared Hitler to Mohammed. Very, very interesting stuff. Uh, Saif Shermatov made a super chat. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Reasoned answer is said inviting AP to after party. David has info. Oh, thank you. Thank you, that is. I, I, I'm, I, I, I wanted to leave like two hours ago. So. And you could have. You just kept talking. Blah, 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 blah. And then let's go through 700 super chats. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, but I really wanted this to just be 10 minutes. People continue making super chats. You told me that before I jumped in. You're like, yeah, I'm just going to be short. I'm just going to keep it short. Meanwhile, YouTube super channel. What is I can't. Sid Dave said, Do you think that the Quran will have a wife beating verse if Khadija had lived? No way in the hell. Mo would have dared, including a wife beating verse if Khadija was still around. She dominated him like crazy. Yep. She was the breadwinner. She was the one with the pants. Yeah, and it's it's weird. He he viewed her as like a mother figure that he's also boning. No, seriously. I mean, I mean uh <laughs> Hey, AP, AP, seriously, seriously, if uh, <laughs> if you thought you were being attacked by a demon, yeah, would you run to your wife for protection? <laughs> I wouldn't. I would. I would want to keep that thing. If you had had an actual demon attacking, if I had an actual demon attacking me, I mean, I'm a Christian, so I just uh, I'd send him to the fiery pits of hell in the name of Jesus. But supposing for some reason I couldn't do it, there's a monster chasing me. Am I running right to my wife? Oh, wifey, could you deal with this for me? No, that sounds like a little kid. Muhammad's doing that when he's 40 years old. When he's 40 years old, there's a monster coming to get me. Khadija, will you protect me? Cover me. I would immediately <laughs> run to my wife. I would say, I would say, please, 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 please save me. 
Save me from what is happening Save here. me. <laughs> People are now making jokes about uh, boning the mother figure. So see what you did. See what you did, David. Uh, Save Shermato said, love you, AP. David, thank you for exposing Islam. Fellow ex-Muslim, probably atheist or agnostic. Didn't Jesus say I came to fulfill the law? Yes, that's what we just talked about. Fulfill yeah. as in... Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, you you should read so that Muslims will quote uh, Matthew five seventeen and not read the entire rest of the chapter. <laughs> it's the same chapter where Jesus is going. You have heard that it was said, eye for eye and tooth for tooth. But I say no, right? It's like wait a minute. If he's saying he if he, if he means what they say he means, the rest of the chapter makes no sense. In fact, the entire Sermon on the Mount makes no sense if Jesus is claiming what Muslims say by this. Um, when he says that he came to fulfill the law, it's it's kind of in the same sense as like fulfill prophecy, right? Jesus Jesus is the fulfillment of the law. He's the fulfillment of of prophecy, and he brings a new covenant. And he is, he he fulfilled the law. He fulfilled the law, and now his righteousness is applied to us. So, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, yeah. So thank you so much. I appreciate it. Uh, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Uh, Romans 10, 4. Uh, for Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. Clearly, Christians living starts and ends in Jesus. We aren't under the law. No, no. It's just secular humanism. Hey, you got to kill all the apostates. Kill everyone. Kill them all. That's what Jesus is all about. Killing, killing, kill, kill, kill. Die, die, die. This is what? Islamic interpretation. Yeah. Yes. Jesus in the Quran is a character and not a man. He's just spouting jihadi doctrine, saying he and his mom are not gods. Isn't it obviously man-made? Well, um, that's, yeah, that's what everyone, that's what everyone is in the Quran. Like, like, so in the Bible, you've got 66 books. You've got all these different prophets and so on, and apostles, and and then you get to the Quran, and Muslims think they everyone have everyone is the same person. They yeah. think they have this book with all these different figures in there, and they all support Muhammad. It's one guy. It's one guy saying this is what everyone else said about me. Yeah, or everyone else says about Allah and says every. It's, it's, it's literally everyone has the same personality in the Quran. Like everyone, yeah, is they just all exact exactly people. like Muhammad, and then everyone is like, oh Allah, uh, no. I would abstain from saying such and such things. Indeed, you are the most merciful. It's like everyone is speaking exactly like Allah in the Quran. It's very interesting. There are no personalities. La ilaha illallah, Netanyahu Rasulullah said, said Dave. Terrible, terrible. It's very Islamophobic here. Uh, eighth, <laughs> eighth ozone layer said... <laughs> <laughs> is, is, this a, is this a joke about Ali Dawas? It's Ali Dawas. Because they got oh, the ozone days, and I was having an argument, and I said there's seven ozone days, and he said, no, there'd be six yet, because then we looked it up and we found out, no, that NASA said there'd be five yet, because so then we saw Rogan, how's we gonna do this? <laughs> We're proud of that. <laughs> it's Dawa, man. It's Dawa. If the I mean the the the, the core of Dawa is if you if you say if you say something, there are people who are dumb enough to believe you. That's the core message of Dawah. Alhamdulillah. You can say uh, anything you want. There are people dumb enough to fall for it. Ozone Layer said, please interview Jason Georgiani in Origins of Islam. He's a regular Gnostic informant and has been on Myth of Vision. I'll check it out. I'll check it out. I know I know both of those gentlemen. That Gnostic name sounds made up though. And Myth Vision. Which one? Jason Georgiani. That sounds like a made up name. I don't know about that one. I thought you meant uh, Gnostic informant. That is not made up. That's um, no. that's a given name. Uh, ordinary person said, "Black Hebrew Israelites convince Muslims to." Uh, yeah, yeah. They don't have to convince them. Yeah, Muslims don't need any help on that front. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, they they, uh, they don't need to convincing at all. They are ready. David the Goliath said, uh, David, what if a Muslim becomes an atheist after watching your videos but still reject Christianity, would you consider that a victory? Uh, I've talked about this before as far as, uh, you know, you can, he he you can if you expose Muhammad as a false prophet, some people, some Muslims are going to retain their belief in Jesus and God and so on. They're just going to re reject Muhammad as, as a false prophet. And, uh, and those people pretty comfortably become Christians after that. Um, but you also have people who just go, come on, man. I just fell for, I fell for all this nonsense for all these years. And it was all, it was all complete nonsense. I don't believe Not any of this. I don't believe any of this. I don't believe any of this stuff anymore. Um, 
Yes, I would. So th the question is, is it still good? Is it still good? And I say, if you have an ideology that is calling for the violent subjugation of the entire world and is imposing these laws in various countries and so on, uh, yes, it is good. It doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter what. No. So, so think of it from the perspective of like Saudi Arabia. Suppose in Saudi Arabia, you had, let's say, a, you know, 5 million people become atheists and 4 million people become Christians and 2 million people convert to this and 10 million people become that or become agnostics or something. But you actually end up with a breakdown of Sharia to and you, then you had to replace those with laws that take into account different people's beliefs and so on. I would say that's I would say that's good that you got to that you got to that. Would I would I rather they all just become Christians and so on? Of course, but you you Islam is in a different category. Islam is just in a different category from other things. They are trying to violently subjugate the entire world to where, in their words, you know, Sheikh Asim al Hakim, where they go door to door knocking on knocking on the door. Hey, you can convert, you can pay us, or right. That was those were his words. So, yes, when people reject that, and this helps take away the momentum of people who are calling for that and want to establish a world like that, yes, I consider that a win when people leave. So, in other words, the entire avalanche of apostasy, even though those, even though apostates are going in various directions, I consider it good in general to have an avalanche of apostasy, whatever anyone's turning to. Yeah. The news are talking about. Oh, why am I looking at all just here? The news are talking about uh, the invasions and the wars and stuff like that. Jewish community in France. They're saying uh, it is very unfair of Israel to give an evacuation order and an evacuation heads up before uh, before attacking um, the Gaza Strip, before invading the Gaza Strip to take out Hamas. Obviously, what they should have done the more humanitarian thing would, would be to do it exactly as Hamas did, which is to give no warning at all and immediately start bombing. Show up and start slaughtering people. And shooting violently. Isn't you know, it interesting? So Hamas, Hamas, Hamas launched like whatever it was, 7,000 missiles or something from Gaza. Uh, they went and slaughtered a bunch of people, then ran back to hide in Gaza. It took a bunch of captives, ran back to Gaza with them, and then, hey, what's Israel doing invading Gaza? What's up with that? What are they doing? Why, why, why don't they just lead back? Do, we don't get it. Just let's just leave well enough alone, man. Yeah, just let me live, man. Uh, <clears throat> most had a warning before an attack won't do anything except make them look like victims. Israel should drop Quran contradictions pamphlets. That's a that's good an idea. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, uh, really uh, yeah and it is, a, it is a rough situation when you say, hey, you million people evacuate. That is... Uh, yes, I know. It, it, is, it is rough. It is. Uh, yeah. It will not be possible for all of these people to actually... Get out of that of that zone in within just twenty four hours. Yeah, it's, and with that said, like, what else do you do? They just yeah. took a bunch of your people captive, and you want to go in and get them back. They're launching missiles at you. You want to go in and stop them. You have to go in. There's you have to go in. How do you how do you do that? And then okay, so you have to go in. You have to bomb certain places and so on. What do you what do you do? Right. That's what do you mean? This is just a massively, massively messed up situation. And the outcome is just not going to be pretty. And until people drop this uh, dedication to slaughtering the Jews, until the Jews are hiding behind rocks and trees and so on, until they drop that, you're going to get situations like this. And uh, people like to complain about things, but people rarely offer a solution to what should be be happening instead yeah uh, but notice i notice the point I being noticed yeah. notice the point being made here is hey you'd be better off destroying confidence in islam i actually i actually agree i understand they have to go do their thing now in the long term this so mo here understands in the long run you've got to uh you've got to expose islam that is that is the ultimate way to, to do i it. i will let my i want to let my employers uh at the Mossad and the IDF know that Shh, this is, shh don't they, tell everyone, man. It's a secret. Yeah, but but yeah, I agree. This would be a better better solution. Guys, he didn't uh, mean it. Okay, I was joking. He didn't mean to expose it. He was a joke. I was Sorry. joking, man. I was joking. Uh, don't, worry, don't worry, I cleared it up with. Him. 
Okay. I called headquarters. Earlier I saw this from Halal Nation, which is this grandma that says, I'm older than your state. And the first thing that I thought that I thought is, dude, Israel is older than Palestine than the Palestinian <laughs> state. So how is this supposed to be a, a gotcha? I don't even get it. Sometimes powerful. Don't powerful. <laughs> um the current modern Israel is older than the current modern Palestinian state, which only came into existence uh, over the last decades under Israeli control and is still not really a state. Uh, FPGA lover said, have heard the position of the Colombia president with regard to what is happening between Israel and Hamas. I have the feeling he is a Muslim. No, I didn't even know that Colombia has a president. I didn't even know that Colombia still exists. I know that's all just uh, cartels and cocaine and stuff. You mean the District of Columbia? I don't know. Wait, you mean, you mean the, the country city of Columbia? Columbia? No, no we know. I, I have no idea what this is in reference to. Yeah, I have no idea. Uh, President of Columbia must have said something. Uh, well, this, this super chat is probably uh, talking about something made up. I, I don't believe it. Uh, but thanks. I appreciate it. Uh, Boba Hewan said it was the Kingdom of Heaven movie before the movie. I know, I know the movie, but what is... What Sometimes is people are referring to something that we were talking about like okay, yeah, yeah. a while ago, and then we don't remember what something is in reference to. Isn't Kingdom of Heaven the movie that is about the Crusades? Uh, and Yeah, I never, I never saw it, but yeah, apparently I actually, it was, I actually uh, watched it was really... It like, I watched it three times, and it was very stupid. Yeah, I remember, because when that came out, I was actually teaching English as a second language, and all my students were Muslims, and one of the Muslims came in and said, "Oh, you should watch. You should watch Kingdom of Heaven. It's the it's the first movie I've ever seen that that represents Muslims accurately." And I was like, oh, "Okay, I'm pretty sure I know what happened in this movie. <laughs> like, <laughs> evil evil crusaders come along and and you know mess with you know wonderful peaceful Muslims." It it, it basically depicts the the Muslim conquerors as like these these very just and very nice guys uh, whereas there's lots of corruption among the crusaders and 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 they're depicting saladin who was the guy who took uh jerusalem at that time as this very merciful very just very wonderful guy which is completely contrary to stuff you actually read from him and about him judean day jesus said this stream is just about the same age of daniel's wife Stop it, man. guys! Come on! No, <laughs> if you want to, if you if you want to make fun of a hypothetical, hypothetical, hypothetical wife person, of we'll talk about his you. his third or fourth because that's that's what sucks. I I don't even know if that's hypothetical. If I said just talk about his 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 secret third wife or secret fourth, I don't even know if that's <laughs> he may have one. We don't know because they all <laughs> believe that's fine. Yeah. No, I have not. I have a lot of respect for uh, for people's private lives, even the ones that I dislike. But to be honest, uh, I don't have much sympathy for Daniel and Kikachu in that field. Um, but yeah, still enjoy. Strap on pleasure machine said, end the stream, you secular humanist. <laughs> uh, Michael Stern said, death by dealt what dealt y h by super chat. What? I don't even understand it. I don't either. You, even David doesn't understand that. How can you expect me to understand? Uh, but, but yes, yes, I agree. I agree, Michael. I agree very much. And thank you. I agree. Uh, Anthony Lafleur said, uh, Muhammad Hijab would be boasting and celebrating what is going on in this war and wanting Israeli women to be given golden showers. Yeah, probably. That's part of the, uh, uh, and that's part of the overarching concern when you see how the dawa guys act and where where you see how people celebrate just massacring jews it's like what do the dawa guys want they want the people who are all in favor of just massacring men women children raping women taking they want those people to win this and to for those people to have political control and they want those guys to have political control over the entire world and they think this is actually better yeah. And so that's what you have to stand against uh, at all costs. Let's talk about more important things. I'm pretty sure this means death by super chat. So, yeah, thank you. Um, no, that's not what it says. It says dealt. Why? You just can't read. Uh, the real Musk said super chat chain, and we're proud of that. We're proud of that. Yeah. 
thank you thank you karen fisher made a super chat thank you so much i appreciate it karen fisher really really appreciate it thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you david the goliath thank you so much karen fisher thank you for your contributions uh 50 is not enough it should be a thousand dollars if you want me to read it uh that's what i said earlier but still i will take this for now and, and yet you've gone through seven million super chat yeah david the goliath said uh gaza will soon be a party place in the middle east israel will open nightclubs bars casinos we want a gaza that never sleeps let the party begin you know what's funny <clears throat> what's funny is that um during peace talks but long before hamas took over there were actually plans to open uh entertainment um things including casinos and things like that in the gaza strip um then it would be it would be like the vegas strip i guess uh but then hamas took over and life changed completely and it turned into isis or proto isis whatever i don't know i wish it became the last last gaza strip hey do you do you realize you said hey we want to keep this short and it's it's two hours and 45 minutes you talking <laughs> it's to almost you. a three hour live stream you said stop, hey, stop talking come. david stop talking i want to keep this short. i want to end <laughs> it <soon>. too funny <laughs> uh, hey, you, gotta get these, you gotta get these super chats in man yeah yeah look uh, Sid dave right here um M Sam said, Hey David, by the way, there is a Jewish woman that survived being kidnapped and killed by cooking for the Hamas fighters. Look it up, LOL. I probably kept an eye on her. They learned their lesson. Yeah, 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 yeah. David the Goliath said, Most prophecy is coming true. Jews will hide behind stones and trees and also in fighter jets. This is a very morbid joke here. Uh in fighter jets, tanks, but they gonna make Hamas cry in pain for Allah. Yeah. It's not going to be pretty. And yeah. you wonder, so notice part of the, uh, part of the idea for just blowing up buildings and, and uh, invading and making the population feel it is to kind of break their future plans for doing this again. Um, and it's like, well, what happens when they do it again a couple of years from now or something like that? Like, like you have to, it's almost like you have to keep dialing it up until they get the point that you're not, you're not going to win here. So give it up. So it's like, gosh, what happens next? If, if they still, if Hamas still keeps attacking, like what, what do you do next? You, after invading Gaza and leveling half the place. I don't know why people talk about, uh, Tovia Singer and I don't want to mention somebody very critically without them being, uh, here. Um, I actually had some interactions with Tobier Singer in the past, and uh, I don't know. My respect for that man dropped significantly after our our first interaction, despite the fact that he told me that he respects me and stuff like that. Wait, he told you he respects you, and that made him that made your respect for him drop. That says something, right? He, he told me that like, he likes like, like, he likes what I do. He's like, he's like, hey, I respect what you do. And you're like, oh, if you respect me, then, then you're a horrible person. Yeah, no, he said, I like what you do and, and I respect you. And I said, how dare you? You're finished. Uh, Boy. <laughs> but he said he doesn't want to have a public conversation with me. I'm your teacher, boy. Yeah, yeah. That would be an interesting, because I don't, I, I, I have no idea what, it, I can't recall ever watching a clip by him. I may have seen one at some point, but I know Muslims love to go to him but i mean it would be interesting to have a conversation i don't know if he's answered this stuff before but uh like hey tell us what you think about jesus line up with islam you believe jesus is born of a virgin Do you believe jesus performed all these miracles i saw a clip of him where he was talking to that uh that 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 golem guy what's his name again golem blogging theology yeah uh oh. he was talking paul to williams. him yeah paul williams uh you're messed up man what, what? <laughs> It's just like insult everyone all the time. Well, I couldn't think of his name. That's not, that's why it's not an insult. <laughs> Call him Gollum. <laughs> it's messed up. No, uh, <laughs> say that old guy. <laughs> no disrespect to the Lord of the Rings, but um, so no, I watched a conversation between him and Tobias Singer, and he basically 
he asked him about Tovia Singer. He asked Tovia Singer about what he thinks about Muhammad, and and Tovia Singer is just uh, you know beating around the bush for so long, it's trying to say to him that he obviously believes that Muhammad is a false prophet, but he doesn't want to say it like that because he doesn't want to offend the Muslims who are watching and the Muslim who is asking the question. So he he's trying to put it in the nicest words possible. And it's like, you know, obviously, you know, as I, I, I don't believe that he, you know, his prophecies were were true and this and that and that. And that's, that's but it's, it's just it was so ridiculous, man. It's very strange seeing people try to uh, pander to different audiences and betray their own values. Terrible, terrible. And it's interesting because that's all the that's always the goal in Dawah is to get this person to sound like he agrees with Islam and uh, uh -huh. that it supports Islam and so on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Sid David said Islam has spread hatred of Jews in societies like Pakistan, Malaysia, Indonesia, where Jews have never had any presence whatsoever. That's that's the thing. You start hating Jews before you even ever know what a Jew is, and Islam is the problem. Islam is the problem, which is why I completely agree that Islam is the thing that needs to go from people's minds. And Im imagine, people. imagine if like a, imagine if Christians around the world just raised children to absolutely hate Muslims and want to kill them and want to exterminate them from the planet. Muslims would so suddenly see why this is a problem. And yet yeah, it's exactly what they do with Jews. Alhamdulillah. Uh, Mort said, nice haircut, AP. Uh, Alhamdulillah, I appreciate that very much. Thank you. Uh, that one gamer said, since David wants to cut this short, here's another super chat for you, LOL. Honestly, how do you guys think this conflict would end? Uh, lots of predictions can be made. I think the way it's going right now is um, the whole Hamas, Gaza, self-governing thing is over. But uh, I don't know, anyth anything could happen. I just hope it doesn't escalate any further yeah so uh i think israel is going to uh crush gaza uh in order to make a an example um out of them about what happens if you mess with them but i think the muslim world is looking at this going well we were much more successful now than we were 15 20 years ago and so things are starting to starting to turn in our favor i think you're going to get more uh, more attacks and probably probably more involvement than just uh than just hamas fighting out of gaza probably going to uh -huh. get probably going to get more disciple disciple day said how can any christians call the terrorists who murder jews evil and then praise god who sends those murdered jews to burn for eternity calling him good this is a question for David. How can Christians call terrorists who murder Jews evil and then praise God who sends those murdered Jews to burn for eternity, How calling him good? Well, we've already agreed to have some discussions about uh, about hell because there are some different perspectives. But the idea is when you're talking about God, you're dealing with someone who uh, has the authority to pronounce judgment and who is just. When you're talking about terrorists going and slaughtering Jews, they have no authority and it's not just and so talking about different things here yeah alhamdulillah i would say i would judge those things completely differently from my atheist perspective since one of them directly affects me in the real world and other humans in the in the world that we live in no matter what your beliefs are about the afterlife <sighs> Anonymous Anonymous said thoughts on Pikachu. Um, I was actually love it. There was a very love short him. time in my childhood where I was a fan of Pokemon. Uh, but so I, I also even had those original Pokemon trading cards, uh, played some of the, the games, watched the series for a long time, and then it kind of moved on to different seasons into a new world of Pokemons that I didn't watch it anymore. Like I, I was already too old when I was when I was 10 or 12 or 11 or 12 I don't know uh and yeah Pikachu is always a very very interesting character among the Pokemon uh very cute I have no idea what a poke I have no idea what a Pikachu is uh and I don't think they actually wanted you to talk about Pokemon here but that's what I want to talk about so but thank you anonymous anonymous no. thank you Daniel I think I speak for us both when we say we absolutely love Daniel uh we'll respond to him We'll point out how stupid the things he says are. We'll point out how awful, 
how awful and sick and twisted it is for him to think that it's okay to marry and have sex with an 11 month old baby as long as you get parental consent. We'll point these things out. But at the end of the day, I don't think the world can get enough Daniel Hakikachu. And now he's he's serving as a template for a new generation of, of Dawa guys like, uh, like Jake and so on, who is following in Daniel's footsteps. Absolutely love it. It's, it's, you know, it's weird because you have these sort of people can have these mixed feelings. Like, wasn't it great when the Dawa guys were all these nice gentlemanly guys rather than all these chests? Like, oh, we're going to rape everyone. And we're going to kill everyone. And uh, yeah, I, I actually did a poll on Twitter once. I said, okay, guys, who would you rather have? The Dawa guys who lie and say that Islam doesn't teach this or the Dawa guys who say, yep, that's exactly what Islam teaches and they defend it. And it was like 90% people said, no, we, we like the Dawa guys who actually admit that Islam teaches all of this. And that's my feelings. Uh, Daniel is acknowledging, Daniel's a, Daniel's a liar too. Daniel's a liar too, but he's acknowledging things that for 30 years we were called complete liars for saying that Islam teaches these things. He's acknowledging it. So guys, these are the guys, all the Dawa guys right now, whatever their intentions are, whatever they're, whatever they're trying to accomplish, are proving us right. Alhamdulillah. And yep. that's good. Sid Dave said a Palestinian state should be created, but only if it is a secular and not a jihadist theocracy. It should have no army and constitution written by U.S. Israel. People have solutions. Mary Amin said AP God's sanctuary, tabernacle, before temple, not Mecca. Yeah. I agree. I very, I agree. Suddenly said just to draw this stream out longer. <laughs> yeah, because we're at two hours and 55 minutes going on now. <laughs> Next super chat, I'm not reading. I'm, I'm leaving. Uh, the Real Masker said, we need Dawa trading cards. Sajid versus Ali Dawa. So do you don't know who, what this is, David? You don't know what Pikachu is? This figure here? What the heck? What the heck is that thing? <laughs> <laughs> live reaction <laughs> David oh reaction. And black black angel just sent me a message with a with a pikachu yeah pikachu uh cartoon <laughs> uh final super chat michael laren said <laughs> said israel and palestine will never have peace unless they believe on the lord jesus christ the prince of peace however they will believe on the antichrist and a false peace it's your perspective um yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure about that. If you're talking about ultimate lasting peace, then that's one thing. If you're talking about like temp, you know, temporal political peace, you can have significantly more peace than you've got right now there. I lost all respect for David but after uh, on this uh, live stream since he said that he doesn't know what Pikachu is. So we might not be, uh, I might not have David on in future live streams. I have to find uh, a new recurring guest. Mm -hmm. Just saying. Yeah, preferably Sam Harris. Inshallah. Yeah. Uh, I heard he loves Pokemon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. AP God Sanctuary Tabernacle. Oh, that was referring to my old stream. Okay, I see. I see. I get it. I get it. We're what, sitting what? here. We're breaking three hours with a picture of of a Pikachu here. This wait, wait, man. wait! Hang on. Is P is Pikachu a proper name, or there 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 are there are like a category of things called Pikachu's? No, like it's, it's it's um. So in the world of Pokemon, I'm, I'm I can't believe I'm actually breaking this down right now. Uh, in the world of Pokemon, there is like there are these uh there are these different kinds of Pokemons, and there are many of them. Uh, in the uh, show, I'm, I'm, just, only, I'm just saying is is that a is that a Pikachu. proper is that a proper name or a class of it, of it's, creatures? It's a, it's a name for the very that specific one. Specific one here. Yes. No one else is Pikachu, just that one. Well, not technically. There are multiple Pikachu's that all look like this, but in the series, you only ever see one Pikachu, which is this Pikachu. Yeah. So that didn't yeah. uh, that didn't help. All right, but yeah, go ahead. I know, I know, I know. Fantastic. Uh, all right, all right. Thanks everybody for watching. Have a fantastic day. Uh, did you ever go to the Hajj? I didn't. Uh, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you very much for watching. Have a fantastic day, everybody. Um, anything else you want to say, David, before we leave? No, you're just trying to get in before it hits three hours. I know what you're doing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we will be back. We will be back soon. Have a fantastic day. And as always, as our friend likes to say, uh, likes to say quite often. Stay away from Islam.